In a fantasy world, a young man named Kaiser Glad used to work as an adventurer. At the young age of 14, he was already regarded as one of the best soldiers in the kingdom. Although it may seem impossible, at that age, he already got his A-rank adventurer's license and was the fastest ever to reach it. It is said that Kaiser first learned swordplay from a great master named Kenne. As he learned the skill of swordsmanship, he started to practice magic with an ancient sage. After joining the Adventurer's Guild, he quickly climbed the ranks towards the title of an S-rank. But one day, when he was already 17, he lost everything. But not because of something bad he did, but instead because of fatherhood. It turned out that the once A-rank adventurer has now become a father of three. It all happened so fast for Kaiser. When he was on a rank A mission, he suddenly found himself at the top of a volcano inhabited by wyverns. These creatures are known as a type of dragon with two legs, two wings, and often a pointed tail which is said to be a venomous stinger. Taking on a mission alone like that was a risk, but because of his undeniably good skill, he was able to successfully complete the subjugation. He was planning to simply complete the mission and head back like he always did, but he thought that he should bring some material back to the guild. As a result, he started looking around for items on the mountain. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, he was able to feel an irregular movement. As he looks at the crater, he knows that the creature he has seen is not the size of a small wyvern at all. After a brief second, a giant monster with four legs and two huge wings appeared. However, although Kaiser is used to fighting with big monsters, this one in particular gave him the chills. He's amazed at the fact that there is even a creature sleeping near the volcano. To make it worse, it's not a normal one. Instead, it's an S-rank monster, an ancient dragon to be specific. However, this massive dragon isn't even planning to attack him, but instead, it's headed towards the town that is right under the volcano, and Kaiser knows to himself that this dragon will, without mercy, kill everyone it sees. As a result, Kaiser rushes to save the town with the best of his efforts, but at the back of his mind, he doesn't even know if he can make it in time. When he gets there, he's speechless at the scene he saw. It seems like he can't even believe his eyes. Every corner of the town has now been wiped clean. This makes Kaiser furious at himself. He wasn't able to save anyone from this massive attack. At this point, Kaiser sees himself now as a failure. But suddenly, he hears some whining sounds coming from the burning town. Immediately, without hesitation, he went to the exact location and was extremely shocked at what he saw. On the ground, three baby girls are crying for help, making Kaiser emotional. Seeing the three were still fine, he immediately picked them all up, holding them as tightly as possible. In the back of his mind, he was already certain that everyone had died, but he's happy that the fact that some lives might still be saved. That's why he made it a decision to raise these children the best way he can. He swore on behalf of those he could not save that he would make them happy as long as he was alive. After his return, things have become different. Some adventurers started blaming him for the destruction of the village. Some who had praised him started talking behind his back. Some say that was bound to happen to Kaiser from the beginning. Some even continued by saying that Kaiser was just concerned since he was called a prodigy. The rest of the adventurers have now seen him as someone of a disgrace to the guild. In short, everyone began to cut them with their words. But even if he wanted to argue with them, he couldn't argue at all since he thinks it's unnecessary to do so. With that said, to keep everyone shut, he stated that he was the one who destroyed the town, even if he didn't actually do so. He was the one who told everyone that he was not qualified to call himself an adventurer. As a result, Everyone in the town started to hate him, but it seems like this is what Kaiser wanted since from now on, his main priority is his new adopted kids whom he will now take care of for the rest of his life. Becoming an S-rank adventurer used to be his dream, but now he must become a father to these three children because he promised the villagers. He'll become their father and give them a good life and he will keep his promise until the day that he dies. After leaving the city, Kaiser has decided to return to his hometown of Yuzaha. There, he decided to raise his newfound children with warmth and comfort. Knowing that his hometown is safe, with many good people around, he is assured that he will also be able to raise his new kids in the best way possible. On top of that, Yuzaha is a little place away from the crowds and commotion of the city, so raising kids in such a place is just the right way to go. As he and the three babies arrive, the people of the town have them a warm welcome. Although they are surprised to see Kaiser with literally three babies, the elders eventually understood Kaiser's whole situation and helped him nonetheless. Compared to the people of the city, the people of Yuzaha even let him stay in a little house on the edge of the town. As he and the kids start to settle, his life with the three babies eventually begins. Since he's used to the life of the adventurer, hustling and fighting monster after monster, raising kids for the first time seems surreal for Kaiser. However, despite the lack of experience, he tried to educate them from an early age, but they always gave him something new to worry about. They fought a lot and were always injured, but time flies by quickly, and soon enough, the kids grew healthy and strong. Ten years later, the three girls Kaiser picked up a long time ago finally turned ten. 
Elsa, the oldest of the three, is much more talented than the other kids her age. She's skilled in handling a sword, and there is no doubt that her abilities far exceed the normal 10-year-old. Her strength and sharpness are on another level entirely, but even if she is talented, she's still a kid that needs to be taken care of. She easily stumbles to the ground like most, and oftentimes injures herself in the most unexpected way. On this day, it seems like Elsa and Kaiser are having a one-on-one -on -one practice when Elsa suddenly stumbles to the ground. As she loses her balance, it's a clear indication that the fight is now finally over. In the back of her mind, fighting Kaiser is like fighting a death wish, so she was expected that she would lose in the end. Despite the fact that she went all out, she couldn't even land a hit. Now that her dedication to swordsmanship has started to wear down, Kaiser tells her that there is still a long way to go before she finally achieves all that she wants. After all, she's still a 10-year-old and quite experienced. Kaiser went on to continue that for someone her age, her skill with the sword has greatly improved since the last time that they fought. At this rate, she might become a better swordsman than himself, he added. Hearing Kaiser say that she might become better than him flustered her quite a bit. At the back of her mind, she asked herself, is it really possible for her to become better than Kaiser in any way? To encourage her to do her best, Kaiser immediately says, yes, that's why she shouldn't quit since he's sure that she can definitely make it. But on top of everything that happened to them today, Kaiser is glad that Elsa has finally been calling him father, but he prefers his kids to call him daddy, just like she used to. However, Elsa states that she can't do such a thing, since a swordsman like her must not show any weakness in their life, since that is the way of the warrior. At this point, Kaiser realizes that Elsa doesn't like soft things, which Elsa doesn't deny. It seems like for her, calling Kaiser anything else besides father would show softness. Even eating things like desserts is showing weakness. However, it doesn't seem like she can hold it, since when Kaiser informed her that the dessert for today is apple pie, her eyes immediately shine in excitement. So without any choice, since this is her favorite dessert of all, Elsa decided to just eat, a little, for today. With that said, before they started digging in, Kaiser and little Elsa went on to buy the ingredients. Despite her attitude, Elsa is such a sweet and loving girl. She always liked to play in the garden and seemed to enjoy Kaiser practicing with the sword. When she cried at night, holding Kaiser's sword always calmed her down. Even when she left her childhood behind, even now, she still sleeps next to her old wooden sword. As they are on their way to the market, out of nowhere, Elsa tells Kaiser that when she gets older, she wants to become an adventurer, just like him. She even goes so far as to make it a goal to defeat the dragon that Kaiser couldn't beat before. At the back of Kaiser's mind, even though Elsa looks happy now, she still doesn't know the dangers of being an adventurer. Kaiser couldn't even imagine Elsa going through something like that herself. But for now, he brushes these thoughts off, since, after all, he's still not sure if she would follow in his footsteps. But he also knows to himself that he can't dictate Elsa's future, since that's something she has to decide for herself. Kaiser is quite sure that one day, she will be able to surpass him and realize her own goal. But first, she has to win next week's fencing tournament. If she wins, Kaiser promises to let her ask him for anything. A week later, Elsa does exactly what Kaiser asked of her. When she is announced to be this year's fencing winner, everyone cheers for her victory. People then start to talk amongst themselves, commending how Elsa was indeed a genius. It seemed like she always wins every tournament every year. That's why locals are in amazement at her crazy strength. Even if they fought 100 times, it would probably end the same way. The locals then tell Kaiser what they think of Elsa, saying that she is a genius that everyone should be aware of, which Kaiser is deeply grateful for. Some say that it's because of Kaiser's intensive training. However, he knows that it's not because of him. It's all due to Elsa's own skill. As soon as Elsa got her medal, she immediately went running to Kaiser to show off yet another achievement she made. But it seems like this is still not enough for her, since she feels like she's still a long way from reaching Kaiser's strength. That's why she makes it a mission to work even harder next time. To boost her energy, Kaiser tells her that she can definitely outdo him and is very much looking forward to that day to come. With that said, since Elsa won the tournament, she has given permission to ask Kaiser anything. But it seems like she wants to keep it a secret for now. However, since she won the fight, Kaiser still wants to celebrate it one way or another. That's why he decided to make Elsa's favorite rabbit stew for dinner. Since it's a dinner celebration for her victory, she can have more than one plate. This makes her super excited and happy, at this rate, she might join every tournament there is, so that she can eat rabbit stew every day. In the midst of their conversation, they shout that a monster has appeared in the village. This alerts Kaiser, and when he heard a voice crying for help on the other side of the village, he asked Elsa to be quiet and not move until he got back. However, it seems like Elsa wants to fight alongside him. After all, she is the tournament champion, so she can definitely help alongside Kaiser. She begs her father to allow her to join up, and with much persistence, Kaiser eventually allows her to come with her. They run as fast as they can to reach the said area. There, they were able to come across a giant pig. Although it seems like Elsa has the skills to defeat the said monster, 
Seeing such a thing for the first time overwhelms her. As a result, Kaiser dashes towards her to stop the monster from completely crushing her to pieces. However, in the process, Kaiser accidentally let her abdomen get stabbed by the pig's horn. This struck fear into Elsa, but it seems that Kaiser would not hesitate to block the pig's attack just to make sure that Elsa would not get hurt at all. With much force, Kaiser is able to defeat the monster in the end. However, the whole scenario has traumatized Elsa in one way or another. Saying how Kaiser is badly wounded, Elsa went on to apologize, saying that she didn't even help a little, and that she was the cause of the whole problem. Seeing how badly discouraged Elsa is, Kaiser assures her that the first fight is always the hardest. So she shouldn't worry that much, since she will definitely gain experience and move on little by little. Elsa gave it some thought, then asked Kaiser if he wasn't afraid of monsters at all, which Kaiser went on to answer truthfully, saying that of course they scare him, since some are more terrifying than he could have ever imagined. But he has no choice but to protect those dear to him. For him, fighting is not just about strength, it's about purpose. In his case, he's fighting for those people that are important to him like his daughters. Fighting for those important to you will give you the strength to not be afraid. Hearing these words motivated Elsa. So from now on, she'll fight for her friends, her younger sisters, and for Kaiser as well. With that being said, her sword now will be dedicated to them, and Elsa also promises to overcome her fears from now on. It seems like her defeat today will serve as an experience for her in the future, and it will certainly push her to become stronger than she already is. Meanwhile, back at their house, Kaiser's two other daughters wonder why he and Elsa are late. The two at home start to wonder what could have happened to the two, since they could have come home quickly, considering Elsa should have won the contest immediately. But everything should be fine as long as Elsa is with Kaiser. In the meantime, one of Kaiser's kids went on to go check up on the mine. In the meantime, it looks like Kaiser is with a friend named Gazelle, discussing some random things. It looks like Gazelle is very much thankful for Kaiser for helping the village maintain its peace. Aside from that, he also commends Kaiser for teaching the kids some swordsmanship skills, since it will greatly help in the future. In the midst of their conversation, Gazelle suddenly remembers that when Kaiser first participated in the fencing tournament, he won the whole thing without getting hit once. There is no doubt that his strength is a little different from the other guys after all, but that's something you can expect from a former A-rank adventurer like Kaiser. However, Kaiser's ready to keep that part of his life buried forever. After all, he is retired. Gazelle then went on to say that he had never heard of adventurers having a retirement system, so if Kaiser went to the capital, he could easily become an adventurer again. But it seems like Kaiser has decided that he won't ever go back to that field again, since he has Elsa and the others now. Gazelle then goes on to ask him if he had already told the children the truth, that he was not their true father. It seems like Kaiser has no plans on telling anyone yet, but Gazelle reminds him to tell them when the time comes. Though it looks like the option to keep it a secret remains all too tempting. After all, telling the kids the truth would greatly devastate them. As they got deeper into their conversation, Kaiser noticed that Gazelle seems to have changed the interior of his bar. It looks like Gazelle took every piece of advice that Kaiser's daughter suggested to change in his bar, and since then, there have been more customers in the bar than ever before. Kaiser's daughter Anna is known for her quick thinking and artistic mind. It seems like Gazelle had been taking her advice since then. Aside from changing the interior designs of his bar, Anna also said that Gazelle was buying the ingredients above market price. So she negotiated with the vendor herself. Gazelle was awestruck with Anna's professionalism. It seems like Gazelle would want to be on Anna's good side to ensure that his business would keep on making the big bucks. Though the conversation was cut short as Anna came to pick up her father. On their way back home, one of the workers named Kamul started running all of a sudden. Anna then asks her father to restrain Kamul immediately. Kamul reasons out that he can't breathe inside the mine, and that's why he decided to have a few drinks inside. Anna then goes on to tell him that if he wanted a drink, then he should have at least taken a break outside work hours. However, it seems like Kamul and the others want to work when they feel like it, and go home when they also feel like it, which Anna sees as inefficient. As Kamul keeps on blabbering non-stop, Anna threatens him that if he doesn't stop, she will have to report this whole incident to his boss and his wife. As a result, Kamul starts pleading and begging Anna not to do such a thing, but in exchange, Anna orders him to start working immediately without complaining. And just like that, Kamul goes rushing back to work, just as Anna asked him to do so. It seems like Anna is stressed by the fact that adults nowadays act like children, but she has no choice but to work since her experiences will be useful when she joins the guild in the future. It turns out that Anna dreams of becoming a guildmaster one day. As Elsa enters the scene, Anna can't help but tease her, saying that all she has is her skills, and nothing more. Since Anna wanted to support adventurers like her daddy, she somehow found this profession perfect for her. Although she still has work to do, 
Anna decided to come home with her father and sister, since they are having apple pie for dessert. Along the way, a villager hands over some food as a token of appreciation for Anna helping them. Ever since Anna started helping out in various places, the village's economy has improved dramatically. That's why it's amazing to think that a 10-year-old like her has already had this much influence in her surroundings. Meanwhile, back at their house, Kaiser's third daughter is seen sleeping safe and sound. As the three finally reached home, Kaiser couldn't believe his eyes when he saw his third daughter still sound asleep since morning, even though it was already evening. Even Anna couldn't explain why her sister was so lazy. As Kaiser wakes up Meryl, his third daughter, she keeps on asking for Kaiser to give her just a few more minutes. Knowing that his daughter would never stand up on her own, Kaiser decided to take things into his own hands. When Kaiser forcefully makes her stand up, Meryl gives up, saying that she'll get up in exchange for a kiss on the cheek. Playfully, she points to her cheek, asking Kaiser to kiss her on that exact same spot. According to her defense, princesses wake up after they receive a kiss from a prince. Elsa, irritated, tells her that she's not a princess at all, so she needs to stop bothering Kaiser any longer, or else she'll get what's coming to her. However, it seems like Meryl's really persistent, so Kaiser has no choice but to grant his baby girl's wish. As soon as Kaiser's lips touch her cheek, she suddenly gets all excited and energetic. Meanwhile, it looks like Elsa's a little jealous of her sister. But instead of asking for a kiss herself, she keeps her promise to stay strong and stay away from soft things like kisses, since as a swordsman, she needs to be really tough. To irritate Elsa even more, Meryl then asks Kaiser to change her pajamas for her. Just by the looks of it, it is already obvious that Meryl wants to be spoiled as much as she can, and Kaiser's very much aware of that fact. Meanwhile, Anna suddenly got curious as to what happened to Meryl's magic school. Happily and unbothered, Meryl stated that she skipped attending classes for the day. Anna tells her that her school tuitions aren't free and she needs to take it more seriously from now on. However, it seems like Meryl finds school much too boring for her, and the fact that her classmates' levels are too low, she finds it even more useless to attend. After all, she is already better than her magic teacher at the school, so she really doesn't see the reason why she needs to attend the school anymore. Seeing how she effortlessly uses ice magic, it makes Kaiser quite amazed. It's known that ice is a technical application of water magic, so he wonders how Meryl learned how to use such a thing. But, as a turn of events, it was actually Kaiser who taught her how to use water magic the other day. After that, she started experimenting with it in every way that she could imagine. That's why, instead of going to class to study magic, she finds it better and more efficient if Kaiser just teaches her instead. Anna then immediately shuts her off, saying that there is no way that their father would be able to teach her the whole day since he's also busy with his own stuff. That's why, for her to learn more, she should just go to school and take classes like everyone else does. Then again, Meryl still decided to stay home to spend time with Kaiser no matter what. As a result, Anna has no choice but to get physical to teach her own little sister a lesson. After a few scoldings, Meryl then promises to go to school properly from now on. Now that Meryl has already promised that she will go to school from now on, Anna asks their father to prepare dinner. Since Elsa won the swordsmanship tournament, as promised, Kaiser will be preparing some rabbit stew. And of course, for dessert, the girl's ever favorite, apple pie. The rest of the night then went well with the small family having quality time with each other. A few days later, after work, Kaiser decided to chill for a while in the field. While deep in his thoughts, he suddenly remembers that the harvest is almost here. It's the time of the year when monsters come after their crops. That demon from last time was probably after them too. There are some people in the village who know their way around with the sword, but are still no match against powerful monsters. But thankfully, after Kaiser served as an official guardian of the walls, he's able to fend off all the monsters. But of course, he has still taken other measures other than just acting as the guardian. While he's still relaxing and deep in thought, Meryl then suddenly comes up from behind. For a good minute, Kaiser is asked to guess who it is, and when he finally gets the right name, Meryl looks real happy. As Meryl sits beside him, Kaiser asks if she's supposed to be in school. However, knowing his daughter very well, it doesn't take much to deduce that she did indeed skip school again. Happily, Meryl even smiled, indicating that she actually did. This made Kaiser frustrated since Meryl already promised that she would start going to school properly tomorrow. However, it seems like skipping school isn't Meryl's only problem. If she does attend, she's still getting scolded for sleeping during class, using magic that wasn't taught, and challenging their teacher to a duel. It seems like Meryl finds it rather exciting to challenge her teacher to a duel, as she keeps nagging her to do many things. So she thought that if she showed him who's stronger, he wouldn't bother her anymore. Kaiser then stated that he can't possibly praise her for something like that. Although certainly, he thinks that Meryl defeating her teacher is amazing, the real purpose of magic is not to hurt people, but rather to improve their lives. Magic has been valued because it helps people. As a result, hearing her father lecture her made her feel a bit dejected. Suddenly, a man comes in saying hi to Kaiser, asking him if he's returning home from work. Kaiser then says hi back, having a friendly conversation. It seems like everyone is having a busy day since this year is going to be the biggest harvest they've ever had. The fact that the demons haven't been able to harm the crops is a big reason for it. This is in part because Kaiser became the guardian, 
But more importantly, that magic fence he has made has been very helpful as well. Meryl then suddenly became curious about this magical fence. It seems like this fence is reinforced with lightning magic. It's made so that if a monster is trying to attack the crops and touches them, they'll be hit by a jolt of electricity. And thanks to that invention, crops haven't been damaged at all. There's no better view than seeing an annoying monster turn tail and run away from it. After their brief conversation, the man then leaves to go on his own way. Kaiser and Meryl continue their topic earlier, but this time around, it seems like Meryl has finally learned her lesson. That is, if she were to use her magic to help others, Kaiser would praise her to the fullest. That's why, from now on, Meryl will be working hard to make her father proud. At the back of Kaiser's mind, Meryl is a genius. If this is the catalyst that will make her study on how to use magic for people, it's likely that the world will undergo a huge development in the next future. Meanwhile, Anna and Elsa are having a serious meeting as to what they will get for their daddy's birthday. As they try to decide on what gift they are getting for their father, they start having a bit of an issue. Since they all have no idea considering Kaiser doesn't talk much about the things he likes. Aside from the fact that he doesn't drink, he also doesn't have a hobby of collecting things either. Elsa then suggests that they ask their father's friends, but it seems like Anna already did. They got nothing. Since there is no way they can ask him directly, Elsa then suggests that they should cook something. But Anna thinks that it would be better if they gave him something that he can keep. If that is the case, the best choice that they have right now is to buy Kaiser some accessories. However, the problem now is that they don't have much money to buy one. Then suddenly, while they are still thinking of ways to make money, Meryl together with Kaiser enter the house. Kaiser is a bit shocked when he sees so many coins on the table. To avoid being suspicious, Elsa immediately reasoned out that Anna is planning to save up some money. Before Anna forgets, she asks Meryl if she skipped class again. And, as she is about to hit her again, Kaiser stops her, saying that Meryl has now finally found her calling. Realizing that something must have happened, Anna forgives her sister for skipping class again. But the next time she does it again, Anna will make sure to give her a harsh punishment. As Kaiser cooks their dinner, Meryl then asks her older sisters what they are planning about earlier. The two of them inform her that they are planning to surprise their daddy on his birthday. Since Meryl has no idea what to give their father, it is then already decided that they will start buying some accessories for Kaiser. Since Anna worked with some peddlers before, she immediately went on to check on some of their pieces. Since Anna has been such a big help, the peddler decided to give the necklace to her for free. However, since the festival is already fast approaching and his legs are injured, the owner asks Anna to bring her sisters to help in the store, since for sure it will be packed with customers during the day of the festival. As compensation, he will give the necklace after the day is done. With that said, four days later, even though they don't want to work, for their father's sake, they all decide to do what the owner asks them. However, as they got to the store, they were all shocked to see that the owner had already had some help. But it turns out that they were actually hired to stay in the storefront to attract customers, considering they looked all so precious. With their prettiness paired with their cute outfits, the three are now ready to attract some new customers. Meanwhile, Kaiser then roams around the whole market, seeing what's new. But a store caught his attention as it had quite a number of customers. As he came in closer to check on it, he was shocked to see that his three daughters were now working as salespersons. Shortly after, the kids noticed their father, also shocked since he was supposed to be guarding the gates. Kaiser asks why they are all working during the busy day. Before Meryl said anything, Elsa reasoned out that they just wanted to experience how it felt to sell things. Kaiser says hi to the shop owner, apologizing if his daughters ever caused some trouble. The owner then assures him that the three of them were a big help to his shop. After a while, things have calmed down a bit, so the owner tells the girls to go with their father and enjoy the festival. Since the three have worked so hard, Kaiser tells them that he will be buying anything they want. As they enjoy the rest of the festival, Kaiser can't help but reminisce about those times when the kids were still small. In four years, when they turn 14, they'll depart towards the capital and start following the path that they wish to walk. But even without his help, he's sure that those three will do just fine. A couple days go by, and now it's finally Kaiser's birthday. The girls threw a small party to celebrate their father's special day. Seeing how the three made an effort caused Kaiser to tear up a little. As they enjoy the night, Kaiser then suddenly contemplates that he honestly thought that in four years, he would be able to see the three of them off without much trouble. But it seems like he'll miss them after all. However, he can't just leave behind the village he's protecting. But the least he can do is give the three as much love and affection as he can until they have to go. A few years go by, and Kaiser went to work just like he always did. But it seems like the monster he's fighting today is quite lively for some reason. However, it seems like this monster has picked the wrong people to mess with, as just with one blow, Elsa is able to knock out the massive beast on her own. After training for so many years, it is expected of her. Hearing her father's compliments still fluster her. Elsa then went on to express her gratitude to her father, saying that it's all thanks to his training. Four years ago, she vividly remembers that she was so afraid that she couldn't even move from where she stood. However, she couldn't afford to keep standing still when there were people that she needed to protect. Kaiser then tells her that even if she has grown from the Elsa she was back then, she must make sure to never forget how she felt at that time. 
Now that four years have already passed, Kaiser's daughters have now turned 14. Elsa has decided to follow the path of the sword, using the techniques Kaiser has taught her to make them her own. She also helps out as the guardian of the village, courageously fighting against the monsters who attack. As usual, she then again won the swordsmanship game, like always. Her winning this year makes it the fourth year in a row. She's so good that the organization even banned her from joining the contest this year. Kaiser reminds himself that it's a lot like himself back in the day, as he was also banned the way Elsa was before. Hearing this made Elsa really happy and proud of herself. At the back of Kaiser's mind, it seems like she is probably the only person in the world to be happy about something like that. Now that their tasks for the day are finally over, they both decide to go home since for sure, those two are already waiting for them. As they reached home, both Anna and Meryl greeted them with big smiles. It seems like the two have also grown to be such great women. Unlike before when they wait for their father to cook their dinner, it seems like they have now learned to do it themselves. However, it seems like Meryl just bought the food from the convenience store instead of helping Anna cook. Speaking of which, Anna is now fully showing off her management and negotiation skills. Thanks to her, the village's financial situation is doing so well that they bothered to name a holiday after her, called Thanksgiving to Anna Day. Meryl, on the other hand, is still the same spoiled child who skips out on her magic training. But she has decided to use her magic for the people rather than for her own selfish reasons. To this day, it seems like Meryl has also done some training on her own. Proudly, she shared with her father that she had found a hot spring vein using her earth magic. Cockily, she stated that thanks to her, the village is going to have a hot spring. Anna, being the business-minded person that she is, thought that if the village gets a hot spring district, it will surely attract more people into the town. But if the number of people increases, the amount of monster attacks also will. That's why everyone in the village should be mindful at times, especially Kaiser, who is the head guard of the gates. Kaiser then reassures his daughter that he will be fine and that they shouldn't worry. Even if he is in his 30s now, his body shows no signs of slowing down at all. Rather, it feels as if it keeps getting stronger. Since everyone is hungry, Kaiser tells Anna that he is excited to try her food. However, it seems like Anna is not confident of it since it's just trying to imitate his cooking. But she can't deny the fact that she is somehow more motivated than usual today, since today will be their last day at home. Tomorrow is the day that the three of them will depart towards the capital. Elsa decided to follow the path of an adventurer, just like her father. Anna will be pursuing the Guildmaster's path, and lastly, Meryl is going down the Magician's path. Though Meryl herself asked if she could just be a freeloader, it seems like she still wanted to become a magician after all. While eating dinner, Kaiser asks the three if they have already finished their preparations for tomorrow. It's similar to moving out of a house since there's lots of things to pack up. Anna then suggested that since they were not done yet with their preparations, she suggested that Kaiser should take a bath first while they finish. Kaiser agrees to it immediately. Little did he know that the three had something in mind. As he enters the bath, Kaiser starts to contemplate of how he should tell the kids that he is not their real father. He already lost count of the number of times he had tried to tell them these last four years, but he couldn't say it because of what had happened to their real parents. He starts to wonder what kind of people their true parents are. But out of nowhere, the three then enter the bath, saying that it's already their bath time. Seeing the three like that shocks Kaiser. He asks the three what they're doing since earlier they stated that they are preparing some things for tomorrow. The three insisted that they join him, and Kaiser eventually relented. After quite a chaotic start, they all eventually chill out by the end. As things started to calm down, the three asked Kaiser if he was sure that he wouldn't come with them. Kaiser then stated that he has a duty as a guardian of the village, and had other jobs he had been asked to do. Besides, someone needs to stay in the village and take care of their house. But Meryl honestly stated that she would be sad without him around. Anna then berated her that she shouldn't be so selfish. Knowing that their father wouldn't worry so much about Meryl, Anna assured him that she would make sure that Meryl didn't cause too much trouble. They will also make sure to send him a letter every month telling him how they are doing. Hearing this made Kaiser at ease, since at least he can rest easy now knowing that the girls have Anna to take care of them. To think that his cute little daughters have grown up so much before he knew it, and tomorrow, they'll finally spread their wings and fly away on their own, which makes Kaiser really emotional. The next day, when everything had finally arrived, the girls went on to say goodbye to their father for now. As soon as the carriage goes off, it seems like Kaiser can't help but be a little sad that his daughters are now going to live away from him. Meanwhile, it looks like the girls are also feeling the same. But among them, Elsa looks the most affected, since she has spent most of her time training with Kaiser every day. But instead of feeling depressed, she will build up the courage to follow her dreams just like what her father had wanted them to do. And so, the daughters have now walked a path separated from their dad, but four years later, that parent-child story would start anew once again. On a beautiful sunny day, Kaiser is now on his way to the capital four years after he sent the girls to live on their own to reach their respective dreams. It just so happens that one month ago, Kaiser received a letter from the three as usual, Although it seems like the usual routine letter the girls have been sending to their father, Gazelle can't help but wonder if something has happened to the three. As Kaiser reads through the girls' letters, he is relieved when he sees that they are all doing just good. 
but it seems like the girls haven't stopped asking them to live with them in the capital. Gazelle then asks Kaiser if it isn't fine for him to do so. After all, he can always go to the capital and live with his daughters anytime he wants. And the fact that it has already been four years since the girls left the village, maybe it's about time Kaiser starts living with them again. Besides, the girls would definitely be thrilled if they found out that their father was planning to be with them again. However, it seems like Kaiser's still worried about the safety of the village, which Gazelle immediately shuts off, saying that Kaiser has been training the children of the village all this time, so the village definitely has more than enough guardians. On top of that, the village is also safe all thanks to the lightning magic fence. No matter how much Kaiser denies it, it is already really obvious that he wants to go to the capital view with his daughters once again, but it seems like he couldn't because of his matters in the village, indicating that he's really a good person at heart. That's why Gazelle reminds him that his life is his, and he's free to do whatever he wants with it. With that being said, hearing this gave Kaiser a sense of relief. He then goes on to state his deepest gratitude to Gazelle for finally waking him up to reality. With that said, a month after the conversation with Gazelle, Kaiser has prepared everything he needs and is now on his way to the capital once again. While on the road, the chivalric order stops them for a moment. After apologizing for stopping the two, the soldier informs Kaiser that someone has told the guards that he is coming to the road. As a result, all they wanted to see was Kaiser and the driver's passes. Weirded out by the fact that the soldiers knew his name, Kaiser thought that maybe they were looking for him because of that incident that had happened 18 years ago. At the back of his mind, if his bad reputation precedes him, then doesn't that mean that they are all here to capture him? So before the knights do so, Kaiser went on to introduce himself saying that he is the man that the knights are trying to capture. But little did Kaiser know that these knights were actually waiting for him for a good reason. And that's because they are all working under Elsa, who has now become the Knight Commander, just like her father, and especially in such a short period of time. Elsa has become an S-rank adventurer and also the 15th generation commander of the Knight's Order of the Wagenstein Kingdom. Hearing this made Kaiser quite impressed with the growth that his daughter has made, but at the same time, he had anticipated such a thing to happen considering Elsa has been working really hard to make her dream come true. With that being said, back in the present time, Kaiser went on to ask his daughter why she decided to pick him up even though he was already so far away from the capital. Elsa then explains that the guild has asked her group to take down a wyvern. Since they defeated it a bit easier than expected, Elsa eventually decided to just pick her father up. With everything already said, Kaiser together with Elsa and her whole group are now heading towards the capital. While they're on their way, it seems like Elsa's men can't believe that Kaiser has never lost against Elsa, who was well known to be the youngest S-rank adventurer in history. Elsa then went on to say that even after she parted from her father, she continued to train. Despite achieving the status of a master swordsman, she doesn't think she can beat her father. Ever. Hearing this made Kaiser quite a bit flustered, but he can't deny the fact that everything she said is true. After all, he is quite the skillful one of all. As they finally reach the capital, Kaiser is quite a bit amazed at the changes that the capital has gone through since the last time he had visited. Now that they are finally at their destination, Kaiser asks Elsa where Anna and Meryl are. Elsa then stated that Anna was busy with the guild and Meryl was supposed to come with her, but hadn't made it yet. After talking for a brief moment, Kaiser informs Elsa of his plans to start finding a job in the capital, but before that, he needs to first find a place where they can stay. But for now, he is planning to stay at an inn and deal with it soon. However, it seems like Kaiser needs to find a house to rent since after Meryl heard that Kaiser was coming, she went on to leave her dormitory where she is currently studying. Ever the mooch, that one. But it seems like a house isn't Kaiser's only problem, since he also doesn't have any money to spend at all. As a result, Elsa assured him that he shouldn't have to worry about money, considering she is already a knight commander in the kingdom. So for sure, with her referral, Kaiser will be offered a vacant house free of charge. That's why, as soon as possible, they started to look for houses to live in. One by one, they checked every nick and corner of the houses they visited. However, it looks like they ran into an issue. Not a real one, though. Both of these houses are spectacular, and Kaiser doesn't know which one to go with at all. But after seeing an aristocratic woman disrespecting a kid from the residential area, Kaiser has finally come to the conclusion that he and his daughters would live in the residential area, showing the entitled aristocrats that living in such a place is still honorable in many ways possible. While they're on their way to the residential area, they happen to come across Meryl, who is doing a trick in front of a big crowd. Kaiser then went on to ask her if what she had done just earlier was a street performance, and it seemed like she was making a lot of money from it. So Elsa got curious and asked her if she was planning to get a regular job in the future, since with her skills, she could get one pretty much everywhere. However, it seems like Meryl is still planning to be a freeloader. But aside from that, Elsa finally realized that Meryl was literally far from school, so Elsa asked how she even knew where to come to find them. Meryl then revealed that the other day, she found out that Elsa had been listing some potential houses. That's why she was sure that the one Daddy would choose would be a place between the residential district and the aristocratic one. Hearing this made Kaiser wonder if Meryl wants to live in the aristocratic district, which Meryl immediately turns down saying that although she loves money, that doesn't mean that she supports greedy people's actions. 
Just like Kaiser, she also hates people who act arrogantly just because they have some money. With that being said, Meryl then rushes to hug her father, stating that she is glad that he has finally arrived. In the middle of their conversation, a man suddenly calls for help. So, obviously, Kaiser and the two rush in to check what's happening. It seems like the magic artifact is running out of energy to make the fountain work, and if they leave it as it is, they won't be able to secure water for daily necessities for days to come. Hearing this made Kaiser think that this whole thing sounded really serious, meaning that they have to do something about it soon. Elsa then asks what they can do for the case, and she suggested that they pour some magic into the magical device to recharge it. Seeing it as a good plan, Kaiser then did as Elsa had suggested. But before all that, the man earlier stated that last month it took five top wizards the entire day to charge it up. That's why he doesn't think that Kaiser and the girls would be able to pull it off on their own. However, Meryl immediately shuts him off, saying that her daddy Kaiser has more magical power than wizards from the royal palace. Since Kaiser had no choice but to help people, he went on to show his real magical powers. With less to no effort, Kaiser is able to solve the problems that almost all wizards in the village are having a hard time solving. Everybody seemed shocked as they saw the fountain's water flowing again. Now that it's already fixed, they won't have to worry about the water anymore. The man earlier who doubted Kaiser's capability then went on to express his deepest gratitude. Now that they have already started a conversation, the man tries to confirm if Kaiser is indeed Meryl's father. When Kaiser says yes, the man expresses how grateful that they were for Meryl, as she made such innovative devices that common folks in the village have been enjoying the benefits with. Since Meryl got into the village and started making her own inventions, water and heat are now guaranteed. The people's quality of life has improved dramatically. Before, something like water for daily necessities was difficult to secure. But now, with Meryl's devices, their lives have become much easier than before. So that's why the people of the said village are so eager to share their gratitude to Kaiser once again for raising such a wonderful kid. With that being said, as the man together with his daughters walks away, Kaiser can't help but express how proud he is to be able to boast about his daughter like Meryl, who has been using her magic for the sake of the world and the people. Hearing this from her father made Meryl quite flustered. I mean, who wouldn't, right? She has been working hard to make her father proud, and it just so happens that on this day, her father has finally commended her for doing something good with it. With that being said, now that they have finally helped the villagers, Elsa suggested that Kaiser should pick up Anna while she and Meryl take care of the unpacking of his luggage. After all, they are all sure that Anna will be happy to see their father after four long years. On his way to the Adventurer's Guild, Kaiser can't help but contemplate that he is now about to set foot in the same place that he hasn't visited for the past 18 years. 18 years ago, he left this place being flooded with insults, so it was only natural for him to feel nervous coming back to the same place. However, as he knows to himself that this is no time for him to be afraid of something at all. As the door creaks, he slowly opens the door with a pounding heart. The moment he steps foot on the set establishment, in the midst of a bunch of people, Kaiser tells himself that he is only here to pick up his daughter whom he loves. Besides, all of that happened 18 years ago and it's in the past. Kaiser is quite sure that no one will remember him now. Since he didn't know where his daughter was working, he went on to ask one of the staff, who stated that Anna was currently working in the back room. So if there is anything that Kaiser needs, she volunteered to take care of it. Immediately, Kaiser stated that it was nothing like that since he only came to pick up Anna. Hearing this made the staff quite speechless since this is the first time that anyone had come to pick up Anna. So she went on to ask if he was perhaps Anna's boyfriend. This question weirded out Kaiser. So he went on to set things straight, saying that he is not Anna's lover, but in fact her dad. He added that he had just moved to the capital today, which is why this is the first time he'd been able to pick up his daughter from work. Hearing this made the staff quite curious to know if she is indeed the rumored Kaiser everyone is talking about. It seems like Anna has told everyone about him, saying wonderful things like he's the best dad ever and the most reliable and wonderful person anyone could ask for. As it turns out, Anna, just like her other sisters, has also outstandingly surpassed others. It is known that she is the fastest person who has ever climbed the ranks of the Adventurer's Guild, a known genius who has achieved the rank of Guildmaster. As a result, everyone in the Guild has much respect for her. Which means, if she's the one who stated that Kaiser is a great man, then that means that he really must be an amazing person. Therefore, it is an honor for the staff to finally meet Kaiser in person. Although Kaiser is quite the same as the rumor stated that he is, the staff has somehow noticed that he doesn't really look like Anna at all, which made Kaiser feel a bit nervous. Then, the staff stated that they must be similar in a way that they are both beautiful. In the midst of their conversation, an adventurer started to get furious at someone for not allowing him to take on a request. But unexpectedly, the staff member that the man is shouting at is none other than Anna. Anna, who is now the guild master, explained to the man that he couldn't take on the request since he's still a B-rank adventurer, and the request is only open for adventurers of A rank or above. However, it seems like the man is very persistent, and he even asks Anna just to make him an A rank and that the problem would already be solved. But it seems like Anna would not back down at all, since she would rather not have to send someone out there to retrieve a corpse. Since she is sure that with the man's current capabilities, he won't be able to complete it at all. 
But at this point, the man is already so furious that he goes on to shout at Anna even more closely. As Anna notices her father standing on the side, she suggests that the man beats Kaiser in a hand wrestling match. If he can beat Kaiser, she will immediately make him an A rank. Obviously, the man went on to grab the opportunity with no idea who he was about to fight. Observing the man, Kaiser is apparent that his opponent today seems to be confident enough in his abilities. Although he is not saying that he is weaker, at the back of Kaiser's mind, his A rank title was 18 years ago already. So there is a chance that the standards for the adventures has increased since he left, and he is now below the norm. With that being said, Kaiser has no choice but to go all out and to make sure that this man won't use his arm again. And just like that, Kaiser won in the end. As they were walking home, Anna thanked her father for saving her. However, it seems like Kaiser is curious to know what Anna would have done if he had lost the fight earlier. Quickly, Anna reminded him that she didn't think anyone was stronger than Kaiser, so there would be no way he would lose to anyone at all. As soon as they arrive at their new home, it seems like both Meryl and Elsa are furious at the fact that Kaiser and Anna took so long. On the other hand, while they are also so grumpy, Kaiser and Anna happily smirk together while informing the two that they are now finally back. Then, suddenly, the two saw that Kaiser and Anna were holding hands, so they both immediately asked why and stated that doing so was off limits. It seems like the two of them are jealous at the fact that Anna was able to spend time with her father for so long without them being around. As a result, Elsa immediately grabs her father's hands, stating that she will also bond with him since she had been patiently waiting for four years already. After arguing for a good minute, Anna then went on to tell them that they should already have dinner prepared as soon as possible since it seems like everyone's stomach was already growling. Since it has been years since they were last complete, Kaiser went on to volunteer to cook for his kids. Immediately after hearing that Kaiser would be cooking some rabbit stew, the girls' eyes sparkle in excitement. As Kaiser cooked dinner, the girls went on to change into their pajamas. After a few minutes, they all went on to dig into the delicious food that their father had prepared for them. As they take the first bite, they can't deny the fact that their father's stew is indeed the best. It seems like Elsa can never be satisfied with anyone else's cooking aside from her own father. Anna, on the other hand, couldn't agree more. After all, coming home after work to have Kaiser's meal is just the most wonderful feeling ever. However, it seems like Meryl is just a bit jealous that her father can do all these things and be so good at them. As she starts losing confidence in herself, Kaiser then goes on to tell her that even Elsa is the Knight's commander, indicating that she has always had the leadership skills to command a group, making her special in her own ways. Meanwhile, Anna is also a guildmaster, meaning she has the ability to control and rule over organizations. And last, but definitely not the least, Meryl, the magical inventor. She has enriched people's lives by leading a technological revolution that will change the course of history. And for Kaiser, those are all amazing things that he can't do himself. Sword, magic, and cooking, those are the best things that he can do. But that doesn't mean that the girls can't themselves. After that brief motivational speech, Anna can't deny the fact that their father is acting like usual, which is something that they all truly miss. Then, suddenly, Elsa remembers that her father has mentioned something before that he is looking for a job, so she wonders if he has some sort of connection. Kaiser then stated that while he was young, he dedicated all of his time to being an adventurer, so he didn't make that many connections. With that being said, he's not picky with what work he can find since he's willing to do anything, like physical labor or even picking up scrap metal. Since her father is already looking for work, Elsa went on to inform him that everyone in the Knight's Order is requesting for him to become their instructor. Hearing this shocked Kaiser. Since of all people, why would the knights want him? Anna then went on to explain that this all made sense, since Kaiser, after all, is a great swordsman. As it turns out, Elsa has always talked about Kaiser, stating that he was the one who taught her everything she knew about the sword. So it is completely normal that the knights want him as their instructor. Since it's not a bad offer, Anna persuades her father to take the job, since the guild is also getting a lot of requests, but still lacks the people for high rank missions. And Kaiser joining the team would be of great help. However, it seems like Kaiser is worried about messing up since he has been inactive for the last 18 years. But it seems like Anna is persistent in convincing her father to join the guild no matter what. And as a result, Kaiser decides to relent and agrees to his daughter's request. The next day, at the Wagenstein Castle, a castle that stands tall in the middle of the city and the place where the royal family lives, it doubles as a government office and a symbol of reigning power. And starting this day, it will be Kaiser's workplace. As they arrived, Elsa immediately introduced Kaiser as the Order's new instructor. But before starting the training, the Knights asked Kaiser and Elsa to fight in a mock battle to see Kaiser's real ability. Elsa is a bit hesitant to do it at first, but it seems like Kaiser is excited to see the power of the current Elsa who is now an S-rank adventurer. Now that they are about to fight one-on-one, -on -one, Elsa tells herself that on this day, she will definitely win the fight against her strong and mighty father. As she holds onto her sword, she wishes that they will have a good match, since she is very much excited. Immediately, Kaiser wished his daughter the best and instructed her to come at him with all she's got. But in Elsa's mind, she has never met anyone stronger than Kaiser in the capital, ever since she came there. 
For that reason, the cheap techniques and tricks she had used so far won't work against him. That means it is better just to attack head on. So without any hesitation, Elsa went on to attack Kaiser from the front. However, as swiftly as possible, Kaiser is able to block and dodge her attacks. Realizing that Kaiser can react to the speed made Elsa think of other ways to defeat him. And that is to do multiple attacks in one go. However, it seems like no matter how much she tries, it seems like Kaiser is still able to handle it. Despite failing many times, Elsa keeps on fighting head on, saying that no matter how much she stumbles, she will make sure to have her victory, not giving up on winning against Kaiser yet. Again and again, she keeps on attacking him. However, for how many times already, he keeps on dodging it flawlessly. Now losing a bit of confidence and will, Elsa somehow started to move slower than she usually does. As a result, Kaiser happens to see a perfect opening where he charges in to fight his own daughter. Elsa started to lose her breath when Kaiser kept on attacking her continuously, but it seems like Elsa wouldn't allow her to get defeated at all. So even though she stumbles for the ninth time already, she keeps on standing no matter what. There is no doubt that Kaiser's fending off all attacks and taking advantage of even the slightest opening. Moreover, he is not wasting time chasing after Elsa, since there is no doubt that he is aware of the fact that he is incredibly strong enough for him to be defeated. Within split seconds, Kaiser started to distance himself from Elsa. Moreover, his speed also increased over time. On top of that, there is no doubt that his power is beyond comparable already. At this point, Kaiser is already completely extraordinary in the eyes of everyone. At the back of her mind, even if Kaiser never managed to become an S-rank adventurer, there is no doubt that he is indeed stronger than most people out there. At first, Elsa thought that after training so hard, she could at least be on par with him. However, at this moment in time, it seems like she's not even qualified to fight him fully. At this point, Elsa starts to wonder if Kaiser is disillusioned and disappointed in her, that even though she is an S-rank adventurer and the Knight Commander, she still couldn't even manage to land a hit on him. As she stumbles to the ground once more, Elsa starts to wonder what the heck she should start to do now. What is it that she needs to do so that she can win? And then she suddenly remembers that what she should be doing now is not struggling to try and win the mock battle, but instead make her father proud. Since she clearly remembers Kaiser said that he wanted to see how strong Elsa has become, it really doesn't matter whether she wins or loses. After all, all he wanted to see was her growth as a daughter. Kaiser is fighting now to see how far she has come in wielding the sword for the sake of those important to her. So in that case, it is about now time for her to show her real colors. With everything she has, she tries to win this fight no matter what. As the fight continuously intensifies, the knights watching on the side are now shocked to see what the hell is going on, since what they are witnessing now isn't a sword fight at all. At the back of their mind, they wonder if this is what a true swordsmaster is. So powerful and strong. As the cloud of dust starts to cover the whole battle scene, the knights wonder who has won the match. As the dust started to fade away a little, they were shocked to see that their strongest adventure has been defeated by her own father. Now that the match is over, Kaiser tells Elsa that the last attack she did was pretty amazing. However, it seems like Elsa didn't think so, since it didn't even have any effect on him. But she really did think it was the best sword swing she had ever done. But it seems like no matter how much she tries, she always ends up on the losing side against Kaiser, confirming again that Kaiser is indeed strong. To make Elsa feel a little bit more boosted up, he wants him to tell her that he has never missed his daily training. But honestly, Kaiser is already surprised at how much Elsa has grown through the years. However, her sword broke in the end because it was the wooden one. If it were a real sword, they would have been evenly matched. That's why there is no doubt that Elsa did get stronger, which makes Kaiser really proud. Meanwhile, at the back, it seems like everyone is stunned at what Kaiser did. So it's only natural that they all flock to tell him that he is indeed so amazing. Now that they have already seen Kaiser's true potential, Elsa tells everyone that if they receive tutelage from her father, the national power will increase, so they will all make sure to listen and learn from Kaiser no matter what. Although this is Kaiser's first formal teaching work, he will make sure to do his best and give the knights relentless training. Since her trainees are already ready, Kaiser tells them to line up since they will be having a warm-up. So, excited that they're training, they're all waiting on Kaiser's orders. However, when they hear that they'll be running 20 laps around the castle with their armor on, the smiles on their faces start to fade away. After training for a bit with Kaiser, the knights started to feel at ease, saying that they could now become swordmasters too. They even continued by saying that their life will now finally change from being an unpopular gloomy knight character to a popular cheerful one. Seeing all enjoy the class somehow made Kaiser happy, so he went on to tell everyone that they had done well. Being a swordsman is not all about knowing how to wield one's sword after all. One should also need the stamina to march. He informs everyone that for them to get even stronger, they need to do the same thing they did today on the following days in the same manner, since if they do, their stamina will increase naturally. With that being said, after everyone agreed to him on his first matter, he went on to say that they shall now move on to their muscle training, 
and for that, they are about to do around 500 push-ups and back crunches each. After they are done with that, they can swing their swords 500 times as well. After a while, Elsa then checks up upon them, asking how their first day of training is going so far. However, it seems like some of the knights think that their training is a bit too much already. As a result, Elsa tells them that back when she was in the village, their training resume was twice as strict as this one. That's why Elsa tells everyone that they shouldn't let anyone from the school enter their establishment. Hearing this made Kaiser think that 1,000 swings might be even better. Hearing this made Kaiser think that 1,000 swings might be even better. It seems like Kaiser is thinking that starting out strong from the get-go would be difficult. That's why he was thinking about starting out nice and easy and gradually getting the school used to it. At this point, Elsa finally realized why Kaiser went easy on all of them. After training from one minute to another, the knights can't deny the fact that this is way harder than it seems. Now that they are all exhausted, she starts to wonder how her men must have been doing. However, it seems like they can't believe the fact that little Elsa has been doing the same training on her own since she was a kid, so this whole time is already familiar to her. However, it doesn't mean that their normal is the same as others. Elsa even stated that when she first came to the capital, she was surprised when the knight's training, which is famous for being so strict, felt more like a walk in the park. With that said, it seems like the training Kaiser is about to start will definitely become out of the ordinary. Even though the knights say that it is harsh, the two will always ask to do their part as well. While the training continues, Kaiser is able to notice a girl doing so well that he goes on to ask her what her name is. Elsa pointed out that her name was Natalie, and just by the looks of it, Natalie was a promising knight within the order. It seems like Natalie has always asked Elsa to let her join them for sword practice. At the back of Kaiser's mind, Natalie must be an amazing kid to be able to grab Elsa's attention that much. With that said, after relaxing for a good minute, they are about to start wrapping things up for the day, with their last one being a training match. Since it's a match, Kaiser asks everyone to form a pair. Among everyone, it seems like Natalie is the only one willing to fight against Kaiser in this 1v1 match, while everyone starts avoiding him. Since no one wanted to team up with him, he will now focus on teaching, However, it seems like the motivated girl is all pumped up for fighting him for some reason. After finding out that the girl is about to fight against Kaiser, the other knights can't help but ask if she is in the right mind for wanting to fight such a man herself, since everyone knows for a fact that Kaiser will hold back against a girl like her for sure. As the bell rings, Kaiser immediately prepares his sword, indicating that they are now about to start their match. After informing everyone that she is also ready herself, the two immediately rush to fight each other. It seems like Kaiser can't deny the fact that Natalie has a good eye. Not only for her technique, but her spirit is excellent as well. Somehow, this made Kaiser real happy, since Elsa somehow got some good subordinates. If Natalie is determined, then it's worth training her every second. As Kaiser's sword lands on her, she can't deny the fact that Kaiser is indeed very strong. But fighting three swords at once is too unfair for her. With that said, she asks Kaiser just to use one for now. Though it seems like Kaiser was even amazed at Natalie for even noticing such a thing. Since for how many years, Kaiser is well aware that an ordinary swordsman would just fall without knowing what it had even hit them. But it seems like Natalie has more things to unveil, surprising Kaiser to the fullest. As it turns out, for the past few years, she has been training herself non-stop so that she can land a hit on Kaiser even once. This makes Kaiser confused, so he asks what Natalie means by that, since it's the first time they have met each other. It seems like Natalie has also been largely influenced by Elsa's story, so much so that even if she hasn't met Kaiser yet, she's motivated to defeat him no matter what. It turns out that Elsa has been telling everyone that her swordsmanship master was her father Kaiser, and that she's never managed to land a hit on him at all. As a result, this motivated the people who looked up to Elsa to finally meet and defeat this Kaiser guy she was boasting about. Since Natalie has been hearing about Kaiser day after day since Elsa's father complex is very intense, Natalie has been eager to finally meet him one day. In other words, since she admires Elsa so much, she has now wanted to meet her expectations by landing a hit on Kaiser. This idea made Kaiser quite amazed at Natalie, since this just shows that she is indeed very enthusiastic. But it looks like Natalie has some other reasons, and that is to make Elsa fall in love with her. This statement seemed alien almost, as if he never expected to hear that answer at all. But it turns out that Natalie was planning to ask Kaiser to give her his daughter if she ever wins. But since she didn't, it's really just an unfortunate part on her end. Kaiser then went on to ask Natalie what she liked about Elsa. Immediately, Natalie stated that Elsa is a very strong, beautiful, and kind woman. She is absolutely perfect, like a goddess who descended upon this world, and that is why she can't forgive Kaiser for stealing Elsa from her. After Kaiser decided to live in the capital, Elsa decided to leave the Knights Order dormitories all of a sudden. As a result, she has now been deprived of the chance to take a bath with Elsa alone. Since their conversation is taking much of their time, Elsa goes to ask them what is happening. Immediately, Natalie acted innocently since Elsa didn't know that she had feelings for her. As soon as Elsa walked away, Natalie acts all flustered, obviously happy at the fact that Elsa was able to talk to her. 
Meanwhile, it seems like Kaiser is also happy to see a girl like Natalie admiring someone to the fullest. So with that said, if Natalie likes Elsa, then he will support her from behind the scenes, making Natalie really excited and happy. Now that Kaiser had already given his blessings, Natalie went on to inform him that she would be sneaking into their house tonight. It seems like she has figured out a way that if he could use the opportunity to make Elsa feel really good in a sexy way, then she would capture her mind and body. In the back of Kaiser's mind, Natalie is indeed a kid who is delusional, and that's why she needs to do something about it quickly. As a result, he went on to tell Natalie that as a parent, he couldn't overlook something like that, sneaking into their house that night. However, instead of stopping, it seems like Natalie just sees this as some kind of sort of love obstacle. At this point, her obsession with Elsa is overbearing, so Kaiser should always be careful as a result. As night finally comes, while Kaiser is reading some newspaper on the dining table, Elsa informs him that she will go into the bath first. Kaiser then immediately tells her that she should take a slow, warm bath since they had a very long day today. As soon as Elsa got inside the bathroom, Kaiser checked outside, only to see a shadow lurking in the dark. At the back of his mind, this shadow looks like Natalie, but it seems like it's way too early for her to be sneaking around. As he remembers, Natalie was planning on peeping on Elsa while she was bathing. That's why he just decided to come with her instead. At the back of his mind, Natalie will definitely try to peep while Elsa is taking a bath. Although he could restrain and scold her directly, as he thinks a lot more about it, he knows that Natalie will try again later and even sneak in at night. But if he can try to make her think that Elsa and him take baths together, he doubts that she'll try to peep at her any longer. As a father, he must do everything in his power to prevent strangers from seeing his daughter naked. While taking a bath together, Kaiser suddenly felt a presence peeping in the window. As a result, he pinned Elsa to the floor, completely making her embarrassed. But thanks to what he did, for sure, Natalie wouldn't peep on her ever again. After a few minutes, Anna comes home, very much exhausted. So as soon as she opens the door, she is shocked to see Kaiser with Elsa, who is obviously a bit sick. Kaiser then went on to explain that Elsa got a little dizzy in the bath, so there was no need to worry since she would definitely be fine after resting for a little. However, it seems like Anna finds this weird since Elsa is quite the strong and capable person, and it's out of character for her to get sick all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Meryl then calls for Kaiser, asking him to take a bath with her. Kaiser then tells her sorry since he has already gone in earlier. This makes Meryl furious since it just meant that Kaiser and Elsa went in together. Since Kaiser didn't deny any of it, Meryl then started whimpering, saying that it was so unfair on her part. At this point, both Anna and Meryl are angry at Kaiser for not waiting on them, but it seems like Anna is just so mature that she went on to grab Meryl and take a bath with her instead. As the two take a bath, Kaiser then goes on to prepare their dinner. After finishing cooking the meal, Elsa suddenly wakes up from her sleep. Immediately, Kaiser asked if she was feeling better now, which Elsa answered with a yes. She also apologizes to Kaiser for not helping him prepare dinner, which Kaiser shuts her off considering he should be the one who needs to apologize for not noticing that Elsa is feeling under the weather. As a result, he promises to pay more attention from now on. After a few minutes, Anna and Meryl are also finished taking a bath, so the four went on to eat their dinner together. While at dinner, Anna asks Kaiser how his training was today. Kaiser then went on to say that while everyone did the training menu he prepared, they were still exhausted, even though it was still really easy. It looks like he needs to update the menu a little bit. Anna then went on to say that there is no doubt that Kaiser's abilities are far from the norm, so there was no surprise why it was so hard for the knights to keep up but Anna is hoping that Kaiser could help improve the knight's skills since the guild also needs them to be stronger to take on the many requests. Speaking of the guild, since Anna mentioned that they needed some help, Kaiser has then decided to visit the establishment the next day. The next day, after training with the knights, Kaiser immediately went to the guild to see Anna. As soon as he reached the guild building, the same staff as last time greeted him, but this time around, she finally introduced herself as Monica, the person in charge of the counter of the adventurers. It seems like she saw the arm wrestling thing that Kaiser did with some adventurers the other day, and she can't deny the fact that the match was pretty amazing. It's the first time she has seen an arm wrestling match like that. After talking for a good minute, Anna then comes out of her office, acting as if she is sad. Then immediately, she went on to tell Kaiser that a B-rank emergency request just came in, but all the adventurers who can take it right now turned it down. Anna is worried that if no one accepts it, the monster might create havoc on the other villages. Seeing that his daughter is obviously worried and stressed, Kaiser went on to volunteer to take it down himself. Before he gets out, Anna then hands over all the information he needs. Now that everything was ready, Kaiser went off immediately, saying that he should be done before dinner. Before Kaiser dashes through the door, Monica tries to stop him, telling Anna that this mission was impossible, considering Kaiser will be fighting an ogre for Pete's sake. But it seems like Kaiser has decided with it, so Monica can't do much about it. On his way to the said village, Kaiser can't help but worry about what's going to happen but he hopes that he can find them soon enough. 
After a few minutes, he then finds what he is looking for. Then immediately, he went back to the guild to show his evidence, which made both Monica and Anna shocked, as it only took a few hours for Kaiser to do so. At this point, Monica can't doubt Kaiser's abilities anymore. The next day, when the residue of the night remains and the sun has not risen yet, Kaiser's family begins to move silently. But incidentally, it seems like Kaiser has woken up before his daughter since he plans to prepare breakfast for his daughters. In order for them to have a productive day, Kaiser has decided to cook all their favorite breakfast meals with all his effort. After cooking and preparing all his daughter's needs for the day, Kaiser happily sends them off to their own respective works, and this has become his daily routine since he came to the capital. And lastly, after Anna and Elsa leave for their work, Kaiser went on to check on his youngest daughter, Meryl. Seeing his daughter still sound asleep, Kaiser can't help but think to himself that Elsa has already woken up before the sun comes up, while Anna wakes up when the sun comes up, and yet Meryl is still sleeping after the sun comes up. Without any choice, Kaiser went on to wake her up himself. However, every time he tries to wake her up, she always says that she needs 10 more minutes, but it seems like she has been saying that for two hours now. He then went on to tell her that if she didn't get up soon, her breakfast would already be cold. However, instead of waking up, she even had the time to tease her father by asking him to feed her mouth to mouth. In the midst of their conversation, someone suddenly knocks on the door, so immediately Kaiser went on to check on it. As he makes his way to the front door, he wonders who the hell would visit them this early in the morning. Slowly, he opens the door, revealing the woman who is waiting for her on the other side. As soon as he greeted his hello, the girl introduced herself as Irene, the instructor at the Magic Academy as it turned out that she was actually looking for Meryl. When Kaiser told her that he was Meryl's father, Irene was shocked a bit since all this time she thought that Kaiser was Meryl's older brother, considering he looked so young. She then went on to say that she had heard rumors about Kaiser for quite some time already, as it turns out, just like her older sister, Meryl also talks about Kaiser a lot. There was one time when Meryl stated that in the future, she would marry her dad Kaiser, whom she loved so much. Hearing this made Kaiser a bit awkward, but what do we expect from a young kid who dearly looks up to her father, right? To kind of divert the conversation, Kaiser asks Irene why she comes to visit Meryl so early in the morning. Bluntly, she stated that she came to pick up the slacking crazed Meryl since they had a magic lecture for the day. With that said, Kaiser then asks her to come inside since he would gladly appreciate it if Irene would tell Meryl that directly. While Irene prepares to go inside, Kaiser goes on to ask if Meryl has always been like this since she entered the dorms. And immediately, without any hesitation, Irene says yes. Irene then added that although Meryl is very motivated when she comes up with an idea for magical devices, there are some days that she doesn't. So instead of training, she always goes on to sleep the whole day. Based on Irene's observation, Meryl goes to school by herself around 30% of the time, which is less than Kaiser had expected. As they got into Meryl's room, Kaiser informed his daughter that the Magic Academy instructor had come to pick her up. Not knowing that Irene is with her dad, Meryl asks Kaiser to tell Irene that she is not around. Hearing this made Irene speak up, causing Meryl to panic a little. Immediately, Irene tells Meryl that they need to get going since as a scholarship student, she is obligated to attend the academy no matter what. However, it seems like Meryl is persistent in not going to school at all. This reaction has somehow made Irene sigh a little bit. As a result, she then goes on to ask Meryl why she doesn't want to attend her classes even if her motivation for magic is amazing. No one can't deny the fact that Meryl has actually made a lot of inventions, so it wouldn't be a stretch to say that she is one of the most talented magicians in history. So Irene wonders what must be the problem that causes her to act in such a way. Irene assures her that no matter the reason, she wants to know about it so that they can fix it as soon as possible. However, it seems like Meryl has no problems with her attending school. After all, she can nap everywhere she wants, eat all the sweets she wants, and even do all the research she wants. But the only thing that refrains her from attending school is the thought that she might get separated from Kaiser again. Hearing this made Irene think that Meryl is definitely a papa's girl. Knowing that Meryl would never go to school without her father, Irene suggested that Kaiser should just come with her to the academy himself. This made Kaiser gasp a little since there was no way possible that the academy would allow a parent to watch over the kids the whole day. However, it seems like Irene has already thought of other ways, and that is for Kaiser to start working as a teacher in the said academy. If he does so, everyone can now be assured that Meryl will start attending the academy on her own. Irene also assured Kaiser that the school would be paying him a reasonable salary. Aside from that, if he is worried that his skills aren't that good yet, Irene tells him that his magic ability is not that important at all. 
All the Academy needs is for him to be able to use some basic magic. Although this is such a great offer, Kaiser can't help but worry a bit since he is, after all, working as an instructor for the Knight's Order and is also working as an adventurer on the side, so he doesn't know if he can still squeeze working as a teacher into his schedule. Since Irene really wants Kaiser to work for the Academy, she suggested that he should just work as a part-time teacher for the time being. In short, he will be working along with a regular teacher. That way, he will be able to balance his time with his other jobs. Since Irene's suggestion is quite promising, Kaiser has somehow started thinking of accepting it. And since Meryl is already excited at the fact that Kaiser would be with her most of the time, Kaiser has no other choice but to grant his daughter happiness. But before he could officially work, Irene went on to check on his magical power amount first. It turns out that the Magic Academy has a magical barrier set up for crime prevention. So if someone does not have enough magical power to stay for a long time, it will start affecting their physical condition. To check it, Kaiser needs to touch a magical crystal, which is a device that identifies the magical power amount a person has via their magic circuits. It will glow a certain color according to the person's magical power amount. The six colors from highest to lowest are purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red. But what is more surprising about this device is the fact that this is one of Meryl's latest inventions. With that said, if the crystal glows yellow or higher, then the barrier will have no effect. But if it is below that, then Kaiser and Irene would keep discussing employment at another time. However, to Irene's surprise, as soon as Kaiser touches the crystal, it literally breaks to pieces. So without any hesitation, Irene asks him to come with her so that she can introduce him to the Academy director immediately. With that said, without any choice, Kaiser went on to come with Irene and Meryl to visit the Academy the same day. He somehow can't deny the fact that the school establishment is quite the sight. As they enter the campus, Irene informs Kaiser that the Centorio Magic Academy is an outstanding magic academy that every student from across the globe wants to attend. Since it is known that if one graduates from Centoria, they will be recognized as an excellent magician. The director that Kaiser is about to meet is also a great individual who has been managing the school for a long time. As they are about to enter her office, Irene tells Kaiser that he should straighten his posture and talk to the director in the nicest way possible. As soon as they got inside, the director asked Irene who was with her. Irene then went on to explain that she suggested that Kaiser work on the academy so that Meryl would come to school every day. But since Irene couldn't make a decision on her own, she asked Kaiser to accompany her to get the director's permission herself. Looking at the director, it seems like Kaiser can't believe the fact that a kid just like Meryl would become the person in charge of such a prestigious school. The director then introduced herself as Marilyn Coleman with such enthusiasm. Kaiser, on the other hand, then introduced himself as Meryl's father. Before anything else, Irene then informs the director that she already measured Kaiser's magical power amount, and it seems like he has more power than any other instructor in the academy, meaning that he is no ordinary individual. But it seems like Marilyn isn't amazed at all, considering Kaiser barely reacted when Irene introduced her as the academy's director. For the longest time already, most people would be surprised at the fact that someone like her has become the director of such a prestigious academy at such a young age. So, if Kaiser wants to be an instructor at the academy, Marilyn asks him how many attributes he uses. Meryl then went on to answer for her father, saying that Kaiser can use all attributes to ever exist. With that said, this now makes Kaiser a top-tier magician, causing him to get the attention of the director. Since he is more than qualified to become an instructor of the academy, the director asks him to show them his magic as part of the recruitment test. All that he needs to do is hit the target that is designed to withstand even the most powerful magic. With that being said, all that Kaiser needs to do is not hesitate to give his best so that they can see his full potential. However, at the back of his mind, going all out is a bad idea. That is why hitting it the best way he thinks he can will likely reduce the impact. Using his lightning magic, he went on to easily destroy the whole target in one go. This shocked Irene and the director considering no one else has been able to inflict damage so far in the academy. And the fact that Kaiser is able to do it so easily is just amazing but it seems like the director still has something up her sleeve. Using her power, she makes the target move and transforms into something called the anti-cop light. However, instead of getting tamed down by the enormous thing, Kaiser just went on to fight it head on. Without a flinch, Kaiser is able to hit it up close, making Irene so amazed. However, it seems like the director wanted to test Kaiser to his limits. So instead of backing down, she went on to go all out just to see how far Kaiser could get. Noticing that the director's puppet is getting stronger with each attack, Kaiser finally decides to go all out, even if it may cause so much damage to the surroundings. As he attacks the gigantic monster, 
With just one punch, Kaiser immediately finishes the whole fight. As a result, the director can't deny the fact that Kaiser's power really amazed her to a very large extent. That's why she doesn't want Kaiser to work part-time anymore. Instead, she wants him to teach the students full-time from now on. To make sure that Kaiser can't deny her offer, she went on to say that as compensation, the Academy will triple whatever the Knights order and the Guild has been paying him. After all, it seems like the director doesn't spare any expenses if it's for the very best. Although this is such a great offer, it seems like Kaiser decided to turn it down for now. So Marilyn asks why is that so? Kaiser then went on to explain that he is not an instructor for the Knights and an adventurer for the Guild just for himself. Right now, he is just taking those jobs because his daughters asked him to. That's why he can't just ignore that and take on another job because of money. It is a matter of his beliefs. With that said, the director has no choice but to hire Kaiser as a part-time instructor for now. They then immediately went back to the director's office to finish signing up all the papers for formalities. After doing so, the director then notices that Kaiser is nowhere to be seen. So she asks Irene where did he go? Irene then stated that he went out to change some clothes. Just a few minutes later, Kaiser then came back looking so fresh in his instructor's uniform. Irene can't deny the fact that Kaiser really looks good in his new uniform. Kaiser then thanks her for giving him the spare uniform, since they are surprisingly not bad. With that being said, now that Kaiser is already prepared, the director went on to say her best wishes for him now that he is about to start his teaching duties. For his first work, the director asks him to become Norman's assistant for the day, who is Meryl's homeroom teacher. Irene then went on to ask the director if she was sure to let Kaiser and Norman be together. The director is somehow confident of their decision, saying that Norman is an unfriendly and prideful man but he is a skilled magician himself, so the director is sure that they have things they can learn from each other one way or another. This may just be the start of a great friendship after all. However, Irene is sure that things will definitely go south from now on. As Kaiser and Norman walk on to do their first task together, while walking, Norman can't help but express his frustration at the fact that instructors for the academy should be graduates of the school from previous generations. At the back of his mind, the academy has already made a special exception to allow Meryl to attend but he won't allow the academy to have a random magician as an instructor out of nowhere. Although Meryl is a once in a lifetime genius and is considered the best magician in the history of the academy after accomplishing many great things, but that has nothing to do with her parents. At the back of Norman's mind, a mediocre magician serving at a traditional academy is a stain in history. Not knowing that Kaiser heard everything, Norman keeps on blabbering things continuously. Kaiser then went on to say that he didn't take this job to impress people like Norman. He took this job for the sake of his daughter and by extension of the school. So whatever the instructors think about him doesn't matter at all. As they enter the class, Norman immediately introduced Kaiser to the class. However, instead of telling more about him, Norman just informed everyone that Kaiser will be the new part-time teacher who will be teaching them for the rest of the school year. As Kaiser observes the whole class, he can't deny the fact that the students can't keep up on how high class the lessons that Norman is teaching everyone are. This part of the magical structure is called the first wall so Norman needs to simplify it more so the students can learn it efficiently. In the midst of the class session, Norman's attention then diverted to Meryl, who is now sleeping through his lectures. Norman then started scolding her, saying that she should mind her scholarship if she still wanted to graduate on time. Immediately, Meryl shuts him off, saying that his class is just so boring, and that she thinks it would be a lot more interesting if Kaiser teaches them instead. Since the other students also think the same due to frustration, Norman decides to hand over the floor to Kaiser to see what he's got. Once Kaiser is done teaching everyone, he will then give a test for his students to take. Immediately, Kaiser agreed. On the other hand, Norman then continues by saying that he will start acknowledging Kaiser if the students get a higher score than the average from the last class. Since Kaiser is also reluctant to stand on the side, he immediately goes on to teach everyone the magic he knows of. Thinking that Kaiser wouldn't succeed, Norman smirks on the side, ready to make fun of Kaiser in the end. However, unexpectedly, it seems like Kaiser's teaching style really shocked Norman. Kaiser somehow incorporates real-life scenarios into his lectures so that the students will be able to understand the concept clearly. He also reminds everyone that the more they study and understand what each sequence corresponds to, the easier it will be to deal with the applications. After teaching the whole class the lesson in a new way, Norman then went on to test everyone if they indeed learned something from Kaiser. After a few minutes, Norman is in disbelief when he sees that the scores of the students are not just average, but almost everyone got a perfect score. So Kaiser went on to tell him that he should nurture the students more next time. This way he will be able to squeeze out the best in them. However, it seems like for Norman, this is not the end of their fight. Meanwhile, at the Adventurer's Guild, 
it seems like they are having an important meeting with every head. Since the Adventurer's Guild is having a meeting, it is already natural that Monica would feel a bit nervous, considering this is her first time putting everything on record. She even starts to talk to herself just to calm herself down a little. Meanwhile, the other members of the guild have already begun talking about the financial results of the guild. During that term, their profit reached up to 57% from last year, which is considered to be a record high level. Aside from that, the guild also has no adventurer deaths so far, which is a first since the guild's founding. Hearing this made some of the heads happy, since at the back of their minds, this is already given considering they have one of the best guild masters of all time. It seems like the heads now don't regret the fact that they have given this position to Anna, considering after she took over, things have really changed for the better for the whole guild. However, for Anna, these results are due to the hard work of the guild staff and the adventurers, and that she was just merely supporting everyone. Hearing this just shows how humble Anna really is. However, just like any other story, there's always that one character who opposes the lead. This time around, one of Anna's workmates suddenly asks her if she is being a little protective, since at the back of his mind, he bet that the adventurers would be more than happy to take on more quests. Besides, if they were to deploy personnel more aggressively, the guild could have saved up on reward fees and the profits would have increased for sure. After all, in cases, if adventurers die in the process, there's always a way to replace them later on. However, it seems like Anna isn't planning to reduce any personnel at all. For her, losing equipment is fine since it is something that one can buy back. However, losing a life is something that is hard to take on. If they don't take the adventurer's safety into consideration, then the guild will lose its trust in the long run. But of course, if the guy is willing to make requests himself personally, then Anna will gladly do as he suggests. After hearing Anna furiously say those words, the meeting place went silent for a good moment. When things lay low for a bit, Anna then tells her assistant that they should already jump into the next topic. In the next report, it was stated that the number of attacks in the eastern city of Duego has increased over the past few years. The adventurers in the city's guild are no longer enough to deal with the threat. That is why the guild has now received reports that the cause of this is that the monsters have become more active near the volcano in the region, and their territory has expanded up to the outskirts of the city. If one doesn't get immediate help from the capital as soon as possible, the people living there will probably collapse. According to the guild's estimation, it would take one night from the capital to get there, so it is a difficult request to get people for. Now this is Anna's job to analyze. She focused on finding a solution to the whole situation, and after a few seconds of deeply analyzing the whole situation, she tells everyone that they should build an inn town somewhere between that said city and the capital, on the road closest to the volcano. They should also start immediately so the adventurers from the capital can rest there. However, it seems like this plan made the guy consider building an inn isn't that cheap at all. However, it seems like Anna also sees this as a business venture for the guild, since for sure, this will also increase their profit so much. Besides, what point is there in waiting for the monster's habitat to expand further and destroy a city? If his majesty orders it, Anna is sure that the feudal lord will move right away. That's why she asked the members to make the arrangements as soon as possible. Now that it is already settled, Anna then went on to ask about the adventurer rank promotions for this term. After about an hour or so, the meeting is finally over. All they need to do is send the budget by tomorrow and they are done for the week. However, it seems like Anna's assistant really messed up, so it seems like Anna's work would take a bit longer than expected. Meanwhile, back at home, Kaiser, Elsa, and Meryl are seen chilling. While reading his book, Kaiser can't help but wonder what has happened to Anna and why is she taking so long to get home. Elsa then informs him that she has talked to Anna a little in the morning, and it seems like the guild had an end of term meeting, which may be the reason why she is late today. However, it seems like even for a meeting, Anna is taking a while, so he can't help but wonder if she's in some kind of trouble or what. So to make sure, he decided to just check up on her instead. Back in the Adventurer's Guild office, Monica looks so tired from doing much paperwork even late at night. In the midst of her conversation with Anna, she mentioned her wish to marry Kaiser, considering he is so strong and handsome, and seems to have a lot of money. However, it seems like hearing this made Anna look at her with grim eyes, so immediately Monica started reasoning out that she was just kidding and all of that was just a joke. With that said, Anna then tells her to get back to work again, since if they don't hurry, they will be holed up the whole night. Then out of nowhere, someone knocks on the door, surprising Anna and Monica all at the same time. As the door opens, revealing Kaiser, Monica immediately stands in excitement as finally, she can now rest considering Kaiser has come to fetch Anna. But to her dismay, it seems like Kaiser just bought Anna some food to eat considering she seems not to have plans on coming home anytime soon. Immediately, Anna says her thank you, explaining that she just needs to finish a few things before tomorrow. Since for sure Kaiser would be bored just waiting around, Anna asks him to work on some of their papers. Although Kaiser wants to, it seems like he is a little worried that he might mess it up. 
considering he's not an official guild employee. Anna then assures him that there is no problem since she is the one in charge of the guild. Besides, there's no way Kaiser would share classified information with anyone after all. With that being said, Anna asks him to start with the work for this month and just follow the same procedures as the ones that are already done. And just like that, after a few hours, they finally completed double-checking each paper, marking that they were already done for the night. Monica is very much thankful to Kaiser since if it wasn't for him, she would have stayed in the office till dawn. Aside from that, it seems like Monica is also surprised at the fact that Kaiser can also do paperwork fast without making any mistakes. So she wonders how he managed to do so. Kaiser then explained that he used to handle the house's account book until Anna grew up, so he is pretty much used to this kind of thing. More importantly, now that they are already done with work, Anna asked the two if they want to grab a drink. And just like that, they all visited a tavern and spent the rest of their night with excitement. After drinking a good amount, Monica can't deny the fact that an after-work drink is just the best. As they are having a great time, Kaiser then goes on to ask Monica why she refers to Anna as son. Is it possible that she is younger than Anna? Surprisingly, she is. It turns out that she is the only one in the guild who is younger than Anna. On top of that, it seems like Monica is the only person that Anna is closest with in the whole guild. Considering Anna is the youngest guildmaster in history, it is only natural that she will make enemies along the way. She has heard that aversion befalls those who stand out, but jealousy is really quite something for sure. But Kaiser doesn't need to worry anymore since Anna is already used to it. For her, it is harder to deal with the huge number of requests that come in every day and deal with the adventurer's peculiarities than to think of what other people think of her. But for this night, they plan to just chill out since with all the hard work the past guildmaster has left, they now barely have time to relax. Just like any other girl, it seems like the two wanted to spend time with friends and boyfriends. At the back of Monica's mind, she somehow wishes to be as popular as Anna since she gets hit on by adventurers so much. Hearing this somehow made Kaiser's mood a bit off. Noticing his sudden change of mood made Monica tease him so much. Kaiser then went on to sip on his beer, obviously nervous, explaining that he is just worried that Anna may fall for some strange man. However, it seems like Anna has assured her father that such a thing would never happen, considering she is not dating anyone at the moment. For her, no one can ever match up to the love and reliability that Kaiser has given her since she was young. She knows very much that there is no one out there who is as exceptionally strong and dependable as her father. With that said, she made a decision to not marry anyone at this rate. Due to drunkenness, Anna somehow fell asleep all of a sudden. This becomes their cue to go home. As Monica says goodbye and goes on her way, Kaiser carries Anna till they get home. Along the way, Kaiser can't help but think to himself that Anna still acts like a spoiled child as usual. Even if she is already a master of the powerful guild, inside, she's still a teenage girl after all. As a father, he wanted to see Anna leave her nest, but he can't deny the fact that she is indeed a handful for sure. The next day, Anna wakes up with the heaviest headache ever. As she tries to remember what she did yesterday, it seems like no matter how much she tries, she can't remember anything at all. As soon as she stepped out of the door, Kaiser immediately started telling her some context clues as to what happened to her last night. But since she can't remember, Kaiser went on to tell her that she got drunk and passed out in the middle of the drinking party. Since Anna is still not that fully awake, Kaiser tells her that he already prepared the hot bath for her. After taking a bath, Anna immediately went outside where Kaiser was waiting, telling her to finally eat her breakfast. Noticing that Anna's face has turned red, Kaiser asks if there is something wrong she wants to talk about. Is she sick from last night or what? Shyly, Anna stated that she was fine, so he shouldn't worry at all. At the back of her mind, Kaiser hasn't changed at all. He's still the same guy as always the hands-on and caring type that every girl wishes for. Meanwhile, Elsa and Natalie are now on their way to their next quest. As Natalie checks her map, she informs Elsa that they will arrive at their destination in a few minutes or two. With them is little Meryl, who is yet again asleep throughout the whole journey. But the question is, where are they now? And what are they doing there? Since Meryl hadn't heard the whole thing earlier, Natalie explained that their mission for today was to subjugate a group of demon wolves who migrated from the Dwego territory. According to the reconnaissance party of neighboring villagers, there are about a hundred of them lurking around the area. Normally, a large number of people would head out to subjugate them, but due to the lack of manpower, Commander Elsa and the Sage Meryl were asked to do it instead. Hearing all this gave Meryl the idea of what she should do. Realizing that she is just up against some demon wolves gives Meryl a sense of relief, since fighting these creatures is no biggie for her. However, Elsa tells her that she shouldn't get carried away until the mission is over. After all, they can't manage to fail here all for the sake of the villagers' lives. We're depending on them. As a result, Elsa reminds Meryl to not let her guard down at all times. However, for Meryl, no matter what Elsa says, all she wants is to get this thing over with so that Kaiser can praise her again. After searching the whole area for a good minute, the three finally found their target in packs. 
they were shocked to see that the wolf's numbers were higher than they were expecting. It is known that demon wolves' fighting ability is C rank when fighting alone, but in a pack, they are all terrifying. With this many, they are equivalent to an A rank level threat. With that being said, Elsa made sure to formulate a game plan that would surely kill the hell out of the wolves. First, she assigned Natalie to guard their luggage, while Meryl pressed them with her magic. On the other hand, she will attack them firsthand. As she jumps off the cliff, Elsa immediately kills dozens of wolves with a single attack. The wolves then started to attack her one by one, but at the back of her mind, no one could defeat her by coming one at a time. That's why she even asked the wolves to attack her at once. And just like that, she's able to wipe them out in one go. There is no doubt that Elsa is indeed strong. However, no one can deny the fact that ever since Kaiser came to the capital, she's gotten even stronger than before. Even if she holds the title of Swordmaster, she's still getting stronger. With that said, it seems like Meryl wouldn't allow for just her sister to get all the spotlight. As a result, she will now show off what she got as well. Meryl Clyde, Elsa's younger sister, is known to be safe, but no one has really seen her true strength before. So Natalie wonders how strong is this little kid truly? With her magical power, she flies off to the sky seeing an aerial view of the whole scene, perfect for executing a big attack. Using her one sweep attack, Meryl is able to wipe them all off at once. Natalie is in amazement at seeing every creature wiped out within just a few minutes. However, despite their victory, it seems like the sisters still keep arguing about the fact that they won a bit later than they actually expected. Considering they were able to complete high-ranking missions in just minutes clearly shows that they are leagues apart from regular people. With that being said, Elsa then asked the two to help her collect some materials and return. When they finally got home, Kaiser welcomed them with a big smile, clearly in relief that his two daughters had gotten home safely. Immediately, the two started talking about their experience fighting off such monsters, which Kaiser praised them for. Meanwhile, back at the academy, it was revealed that Norman Beckman is an elite teacher in the Centoria Academy who has graduated from the same institution, top of his class. After that, he became a court magician and teacher right after. For years, no one has matched his magical prowess, and he wanted to keep it that way. On the other hand, there's Irene Bowler, a talented woman who has also graduated from the academy. She's a new teacher hired by the director, and Norman doesn't go against her at all. In fact, he even wants to make her his. While they are in the hallway, Irene has somehow managed to start a conversation with Norman, praising him for the improvements in his class's grades. Norman immediately boosts himself up, saying that it is already obvious, considering whenever a talented student meets a talented instructor, drastic improvements would definitely be the end result. However, he knows to himself that is not really the case, considering Kaiser was the one who helped the students to reach that goal and not him. On top of that, Irene also mentioned Kaiser in between their conversation, saying that she also noticed how excited the students are to see Kaiser in their class. Norman immediately got secretly furious, so to change the topic, he went on to ask Irene if she wants to grab dinner with him later tonight. However, it seems like Irene already has some plans for the night. As a result, she respectfully declines Norman's offer. However, since Norman is really persistent about it, he goes on to tell Irene that the invitation still stands if she ever wants to come. Since she can't do much about it, Irene just stated that she will get in touch if she finds the time. Since her glass is on the other side of the academy, she excuses herself as she will now go on her way. Seeing Irene walk away made Norman think that since the beginning she had a glorious life, but lately, things have been going south for him. It seems like everyone started liking the new guy, from students to teachers, and Norman has been left out of the spotlight. Every time he stands in front of the class, the students immediately start complaining, saying that they want Kaiser to teach them instead. Norman tried to make them come back to him again, however, no matter how much he tried, it seems like the students truly wanted Kaiser no matter what. When Norman finally went on to listen to the students' complaints, it was revealed that everyone thought Norman was just too strict with them. When they go ask him a question, he will complain and shout at them endlessly. Plus, his explanations are hard to get. Meanwhile, Kaiser teaches them happily, and his teaching method is easy to understand. While the students were talking, Irene then got into the scene, a bit shocked at what was happening. Hearing that the students love Kaiser so much made her smile, causing Norman to get furious at Kaiser once more. So he tried to degrade Kaiser's standing, which made Irene irritated. As a result, instead of accepting Norman's invitation to dinner, Irene decided to come with Kaiser and cook some food for his daughters. Now that the anger and frustration in Norman started to build up, out of nowhere, he went on to ask Kaiser to fight him in a duel. However, it seems like Kaiser has no plans to waste his time on some stupid things like this. But with Irene's persuasion, he eventually granted Norman's request. With that being said, they all went to the training ground and everyone was excited to see who would win. The director is somehow shocked at what's happening. However, it seems like Irene already knew that this was bound to happen, given Norman's personality. Meanwhile, inside Norman's thoughts, 
He really wants to crush Kaiser to pieces, as he stole everything from him. He has now pushed his luck too much, and that's why he has to pay for it. With that said, Norman will now show Kaiser the overwhelming gap between them. But the question is, will Norman survive Kaiser's majestic power? Well, we're about to find out. Before the duel begins, the students start to wonder if Kaiser will win since everyone is not yet sure whether he will or not. After all, no one has seen him as a mage yet, so even if he is so great at teaching, no one can be sure that he can win a fight against an elite professor like Norman. However, it seems like Irene and Meryl are quite confident that Kaiser will win this so easily, considering he easily passed the exam without worries. However, it seems like the director isn't sure about that at all. Although it is true that Kaiser is powerful, considering that he destroyed that golem in one go, this time around, he is up against a human, who is known to be unpredictable. Going back to Kaiser and Norman, it seems like Norman is quite confident that he is much stronger than Kaiser, which is why there is no doubt that he will win this duel in no time. He even went on to say that if Kaiser just didn't have the same title of instructor as he did, he would have killed Kaiser in one go already. This time though, he will only be hurting him with all his might. He even finds the time to boast about his achievement of being top of his class at the academy. He has already mastered three of the five major forms of magic, which has proved that he is a first-rate magician, higher than Kaiser can ever be. He even went on to say that his career is completely different from a third-rate magician from the countryside like Kaiser, that he has gone through so much carnage that they can't be compared in any way. Immediately, Kaiser went on to tell him that this field is not an interview room, so Norman doesn't need to brag about himself so much. All they need to do now is concentrate on the duel. This statement has somehow infuriated Norman so much. As a result, he's now more pumped up than earlier. With much dedication, he went on to say that he would not let his actions show how capable he truly is. Without any hesitation, Norman went on to show off his magical powers, starting off with his fire magic. This somehow made Geyser a bit stunned, since this was just a beginner level spell. Knowing that there is something more to what Norman is trying to show, Kaiser keeps himself alert at all times. And just as expected, it seems like Norman has attacked him from behind, causing everyone to get shocked for a bit. As the loud bang echoes through the battlefield, Norman looks so happy showing off his Fire Lance technique. It is an advanced level fire spell that only first class mages can use. Anyone who gets hit by it will be unable to fight anymore. As a result, Norman is now sure that Kaiser can't anymore win this fight no matter how much he tries to. However, to his surprise, it seems like Kaiser got back on his feet again. It seems like he endured it like a beast after all. At the back of Kaiser's mind, it seems like Norman has used this called transfer magic, which is a technique that uses teleportation magic. Based on Kaiser's observation, while Norman uses his right arm, he distracts Kaiser with a fireball, only to ambush him from behind. This made Kaiser realize that Norman is indeed no ordinary man at all. Norman then went on to tell Kaiser something crucial. According to him, there are around 20 magicians working at the royal castle. They are responsible for inspecting other countries, covert operations, and exterminating hostile forces, which simply means that they perform a wide variety of duties more than anyone could imagine. They are the creme de la creme among magicians in the capital. These said personnel are called the court magicians. Just getting to that position is an achievement in itself, and that's where Norman was for 10 years. Telling Kaiser this simply implies that Norman wanted Kaiser to feel intimidated at the thought that their experience is worlds apart. But it seems like Norman can't deny the fact that Kaiser deserves some credit for surviving his first attack. However, it seems like this was just a little taste. Next time, Norman will make sure that Kaiser won't be so lucky anymore. Using his Accelera technique, Norman attacks Kaiser once again. This time around, he is faster than he was earlier. However, it seems like Kaiser has managed to react on time. This made Norman think that Kaiser is indeed not just a beast, he also has good eyes for some reason. But since he was not yet done with it, Norman went on to do his second attack once more. However, since Kaiser isn't ordinary just like Norman thinks, Kaiser has somehow managed to land a hit on this elite teacher. As a result, Norman tries to attack Kaiser with all his might once again, but every time he tries to, Kaiser always blocks it. At the back of Norman's mind, Kaiser shouldn't be able to see anything right now, but it seems like with his power, Kaiser still has a chance of winning this fight after all. Norman then tries to use some of his other attacks, but no matter what he tries, Kaiser always finds a way to repel them for some reason. It turns out that Kaiser really doesn't see anything, but that doesn't mean he can't do anything about it. It seems like he can feel each of Norman's attacks even without visuals. He has a talent in which he can read Norman's trajectory by feeling the slight flow of magic in the air. Although Kaiser can't really say that he has tried this before, it's quite handy for sure. However, it is definitely certain that such a thing takes a lot of concentration. So, Norman plans to see how long Kaiser can last if he attacks continuously, 
Meanwhile, the audience, or the students, are in great awe as they see Professor Norman using such a high level like it's nothing. But it seems like they also took notice of Kaiser's ability, making this whole duel a top level fight. On the other hand, it seems like Kaiser has not failed to amaze the director once again. At the back of Marilyn's mind, Kaiser has offensive magic too, yet he just dedicates himself to defense. But it's not as if he can't afford to attack. So this made the director ask himself, what is Kaiser trying to do exactly? Well, it turns out that Kaiser is planning to exhaust Norman's mana to the extent that he can't move anymore. Now that Kaiser's eyes are starting to recover, there's a big chance that Norman's magic won't work on him anymore. Knowing that this will be his end, Norman tries to rant over Kaiser with hurtful words, but it seems like Kaiser couldn't care less. After all, if they continue fighting, it is Norman's body that will suffer the most. At this point, Norman thinks that Kaiser is somehow underestimating him already. As a result, he went on to use one of his deadliest attacks. Trident is a secret spell passed down in Norman's family. It is the strongest offensive spell combining the fire, wind, and lightning attributes, and Norman is planning to skewer Kaiser with it. However, it seems like Kaiser has easily repelled it as well. As a result, this made Norman wonder how the hell a supposedly third-rate magician is able to use such a high kind of magic. Since many wonder so much, Kaiser went on to reveal that maybe it is because of his teacher, whose name is Etra. Hearing the word Etra surprised Norman since she is known to be the most powerful magician in the history of the capital, and is the one who bears the title of Great Sage. It is said that she doesn't want to waste her time on people who have no talent, as she is famous for not taking on any apprentices. That's why it is quite surprising that someone has actually learned her magic. Even though the duel is not over yet, Meryl asks her dad why he went so easy on Norman. Kaiser then explained that he wasn't really holding back. He just never shot a spell at a person directly, and he didn't want to fire magic directly at Norman. That is why his only choice left was to block all of Norman's spells until he ran out of mana. Hearing this made Norman shocked, as he never expected that Kaiser was that strong. On the other hand, Irene then went on to congratulate Kaiser. According to her, as expected, it was a complete victory for him and was a wonderful display of his spells. However, Kaiser knows that the fight isn't over yet, considering Norman hasn't accepted his defeat just yet. However, before Norman can even land a hit on Kaiser, the director immediately stops him, saying that he is now at his limit. He doesn't need to push himself any further to prove anything. And as director, Marilyn orders him to accept defeat. With that said, the duel has now finally come to an end. After that long and tiring duel, the director invited Kaiser and Norman together with Irene to have a drink. Since they had a duel in the middle of class hours, the director decided to punish the two. So, for the consequences of their actions, Norman will get a two-month pay cut, and whenever Kaiser shows up to work, he will be in charge of teaching for a while. After making everything clear between the two, the director's attention then went on to Irene, asking her if she is in love with Kaiser or what. Immediately, Irene flustered so much with a sudden question, but she also made it clear that she is certain she is not in love with him at all, but the fact that she is blushing just gives it away completely. The director then asks Kaiser if he has kids, and why he isn't married yet. So if he is looking for a wife, he can just ask for Irene's hand. To tease Kaiser more, the director went on to touch Irene's front, showing it off to Kaiser, saying that he will definitely waste such a blessing if he declines. Immediately, Irene stops the director, saying that she will sue her for harassing her in front of the other professors. However, it seems like the director is confident in the fact that as a woman in charge of the best magic academy in the kingdom, she could easily pull a few strings and win that lawsuit in no time. To fight back, Irene then tells the director that she also needs to marry herself, considering she is already of rightful age. As a result, this caused a loud argument between the two. Meanwhile, Kaiser starts a conversation with Norman, expressing that he feels bad that Norman is the only one who got punished harshly. However, it seems like Norman is already used to it, and he also thinks that this is how things should be. After all, he was the person who started and lost a duel, so he has no right to complain. As per him, he is already fine giving Kaiser the right to teach, since he fully deserves it too. However, that doesn't mean that Norman will give up on their fight. He promises to surpass Kaiser's class no matter what. This made Kaiser smirk, but he was somehow looking forward to it. Now that they had already started a conversation, Norman started to ask Kaiser some questions about his teaching style. Kaiser then stated that according to his master Etra, teaching magic isn't just about knowing the principles, since a teacher must also know how to teach their students what it truly means to be a mage. Since magic powers are inherited from the past, it is Kaiser's duty to pass them on to Meryl and the other students. After all, he doesn't want to become the strongest magician. All that he wants is for his children to become strong magicians. And in cases where they invent great magical devices that help people, then Kaiser would know he did really well. 
At this point, Norman has slowly understood Kaiser more than he did before. So we might see the relationship progress in the end after all. Meanwhile, the director and Irene are still arguing and the discussion between the professors continues. After drinking so much booze for the rest of the night, Kaiser has no choice but to take Norman home safely, considering he can't even walk on his own anymore. While on the way, Norman starts to express how frustrated he is at the fact that his dignity as a teacher has now been degraded. But Kaiser assures him that there is plenty of time for him to redeem himself. After all, he is always there to help. This comment somehow shocked Norman, as he never expected that Kaiser would be such a kind-hearted person, despite all the bad things he said to him before. The next day, Kaiser went on to teach the whole class as per the director's orders. After teaching the concepts, Kaiser also told everyone that he had prepared some samples for everyone to try out. And after that, they can also make their own circles. But before anything else, he will first explain to everyone how it works. According to Kaiser, first, they need to put their mana into the magic solution he just handed out. After that, they should pour it into the magic circle and activate it. If one doesn't understand something, Kaiser tells them not to hesitate in asking. After class, Kaiser is weirded out at the fact that Meryl is nowhere to be found even if they went to school together. But he just brushes it off, saying that he will just check her lab during recess. Meanwhile, Irene then greets him on a nice day, saying that he did really well during class. Kaiser then stated his thank you, admitting that he was a little nervous at first. But fortunately, he is able to push through it. Then after finally noticing, Kaiser asks where Professor Norman goes. But it seemed like he was just chilling on the other side of the room, thinking deeply into his thoughts. Then all of a sudden, Meryl enters the room looking so excited. As it turns out, she has been holed up in her lab. After experimenting for a good minute, she is able to finally complete her current research. Looking at how happy Meryl is also makes Kaiser happy. At the back of his mind, the magic he has thought Meryl has now finally serves those in needs. Since everyone really wanted to see what her new inventions could do this time, everyone stayed still waiting for her to show them off. However, since Meryl is so clumsy, she suddenly falls to the ground, breaking the potion bottle. Since it was Kaiser's mana that activated the potion instead of hers, the students now inside started falling head over heels for Kaiser. As it turns out, Meryl's potion is actually an aphrodisiac, since she actually plans to make Kaiser fall in love with her so much. But since it ended up being a complete fail, Kaiser now has to run away from everyone for a good three hours. Since then, Norman has also started acting crazy around Kaiser. But Kaiser wonders why the spell doesn't work on Meryl. So Meryl explained that it actually worked, that liking Kaiser is already normal for her, and that's why she's the only one who acts normal among the rest. This means that Meryl usually carries that insane love within her, which makes Kaiser a bit disturbed. So at the back of his mind, he may somehow have messed up a little in raising Meryl on that part. The next day, for some reason, Meryl surprisingly woke up on her own, looking so happy and energetic. Even her older sisters are also shocked by the sudden change. So, she went on to explain that it is because they all miraculously got a day off, meaning that it's their long-awaited family date. However, it seems like Anna is not taking that comment that seriously, seeing that Meryl is such a piece of work. If she woke up this early every day, she wouldn't be late anymore. But instead of minding her sister's comments, Meryl went on to say that today is the day she will get out with Kaiser and have a date. After breakfast, the girls have now planned to get ready and gather in the living room since they are about to go on a long-awaited trip. Since it is a holiday, it is already natural that the city area is packed with so many people. So Kaiser reminds the girls to stay close so that he doesn't lose sight of them. Noticing that their father doesn't have that many clothes in his wardrobe, the girls decided to take him to a clothes store to get some fresh ones. As they enter the department store, Kaiser is overwhelmed with all sorts of clothes laid around. It seems like the girls chose the most popular brand store in the capital now, so they get their dad all the latest fashion. Since they didn't have that much time, they immediately went on to get everything they think looks nice on Kaiser. After a good minute, they were able to finish shopping with them, leaving the store with so many shopping bags in hand. Next up, they are now about to go to the next store. Since they all finished shopping for Kaiser, they will now shop for themselves as well. Since Elsa rarely shops clothes for herself, her sisters forced her to try on some. To make the whole experience a bit more fun, Kaiser is the one who chooses the clothes for them to try. After choosing the ones he thinks are suitable for his kids, the girls immediately change. Among the three, it seems like Meryl is the one who chooses the most revealing one. But since it looks a bit weird for a kid like her, Kaiser immediately asks her to change. Then Elsa went on next. As soon as Kaiser saw her, he couldn't deny the fact that the dress really suited her so much. However, it seems like Elsa isn't comfortable since as a swordswoman, she detests these types of weak outfits. But since it makes Kaiser happy, it also makes her feel the same way as well. 
Kaiser then went on to say that the dress really highlights Elsa's well-proportioned model figure. Without any bias, Kaiser thinks it looks wonderful. With that said, after buying some clothes for themselves, as soon as they step outside, the crowd can't help but look at how beautiful the family looks. As they walk together in the midst of the sea of people, the girl started clinging to Kaiser. At the back of Elsa's mind, doing such a thing somehow makes her feel safe for some reason, which gives Kaiser the sense of relief. Since the girls are now hungry, Kaiser decided to take them to their favorite cafe. However, on their way there, a loud bang suddenly echoes in the busy road. It seems like a robbery is taking place in one of the stores around the block. Immediately, Elsa went on to chase the guy, and as a result, Kaiser also made sure to help his daughter in catching this bad guy. However, despite her speed, it seems like she still lost him after the robbery and used a child to escape. But with the help of Meryl and Anna, Kaiser and Elsa are able to locate the robber in the end. The robber seems too shocked since he was already confident he lost the two. But it seems like the robber is not worried at all considering his workmates are also with him as well. They even started making some malicious statements about Elsa which made Kaiser angry. As a result, they were all wiped out in one second. And just like that, the family's day off has ended with such a tiring experience. After a few hectic days teaching in the academy, Kaiser has finally found the time to go back to the Knight's Order base to train everyone once again. With much enthusiasm and energy, the Knights greet Kaiser with a very good morning, to which Kaiser replies back with much liveliness as well. Without wasting any second, Kaiser immediately asks everyone to go onto their respective places as they will start training already. However, upon scanning the whole group, Kaiser notices that his daughter Elsa was nowhere to be found, so he wonders if she has a mission to finish today. Natalie then informs Kaiser that Elsa has been summoned by the royal family right after she arrived early that morning. Kaiser then got worried that something had happened, but it seems like Elsa was just called for some urgent meeting that needs to be discussed. Since there is no way around it anymore, Kaiser has decided to get started with the training despite Elsa not being present. As the training starts, Kaiser can't help but be so proud that the knights have now become much better as they all steadily get stronger with each session. Somehow, Kaiser's training works considerably better than those basic training out there. Since his students have improved so much, as an instructor, he aims to get better himself as well. As he remembers the time he and Norman faced in a duel, Kaiser can't deny the fact that Norman's speed and skills are undeniably top-notch. As a result, he tries to mimic the same move Norman did at that time, but when he does it, there's no denying that it is so forceful, causing a lot of damage to the surroundings. That's why for now, Kaiser wants to be careful in executing any attacks for a while. A few hours later, after training the Knight's Order, Kaiser went on to visit the Adventurer's Guild. There, Monica keeps on showering him with questions, asking what are Anna's weaknesses. When Kaiser asked why she was curious about it, Monica honestly stated that she wanted to know if someone perfect like Anna could possibly have some flaws as well, since for her, it is so unfair that Anna is able to do everything with ease. On top of that, Monica also wanted to know everything since if the difference between her and Anna was so large, it would definitely lower their motivation and hinder their work. That's why she wanted to know if Anna has some sort of weakness like anybody else out there. Aside from that, at the back of her mind, if only she knew Anna's weaknesses, she could already have a sense of privilege whenever Anna gets mad at her for a mistake she made at work. Since Monica looks so persistent about it, Kaiser then goes on to tell her what he thinks Anna's weakness is. So excited, Anna attentively listens to whatever Kaiser is about to say. Kaiser then started explaining that when Anna was still a child, she had a great thirst for knowledge until she was old enough to get out. During that time, Anna used to play in the garden with a book. But there was one day when Kaiser happened to move the stone at the edge of the garden, and Anna accidentally got scared away when she saw so many bugs. Ever since that day, Anna has been afraid of bugs already. This revelation somehow left Monica speechless since she didn't expect that a guildmaster would be afraid of such things. After all, she is more afraid of the rough faces of the adventurers than some mere bugs. But it is still nice to know that Anna doesn't like bugs. Since she already had an idea about Anna's weaknesses, Monica immediately went on to prepare her scheme to defeat Anna in no time. After a few minutes, she went back to the office, shocking Kaiser considering it didn't take her that long to finish whatever she was planning to plot. So when Kaiser asks what she was doing, Monica proudly shows off her handmade spider toy. It seems like she has wrapped the yarn and paper around a wire, and after a few tries, she eventually achieved her desired end product. At the back of her mind, this fake spider is going to make Anna scream so much. And just right on time, Anna enters the office, surprised to see her father inside. When asked what he was doing in the guild, Kaiser explained that the knight's training finished early, so he thought he should just drop by to help with some things in the guild. But since there isn't much request, Anna tells him to just rest up for now. While the father and daughter are talking, 
Monica finds this as the perfect timing to finally prank Anna. She tells Anna that there is a spider on her back. Hearing this made Anna freeze for a while. Immediately, she told Monica to kill it quickly, but it seemed like Monica was so good at acting that she kept on telling Anna that she couldn't catch it for some reason. However, after a few minutes of pretending, Monica eventually decided to take it off, calming Anna. But it seems like Anna has noticed that the spider is a fake. As a result, she started giving Monica a grim look for having some guts in attacking her with something like this. So immediately, she asks what the hell is going on and that Monica should tell her everything now. Knowing this will not go well, Kaiser excuses himself saying that he is going to buy some dinner. Monica tries to blame Kaiser for it, but Anna is sure that her daddy will not do something terrible to her at all. Since she knows that Monica is the one behind it, Anna now plans to give her a thorough lecture from now on. As Kaiser got out of the guild, he felt somehow relieved that he was able to get out of that disaster. So as an apology, he plans to make an apple pie for dessert. So he goes on to buy some fresh apples on the market. As he walks down the market, a thought then suddenly strikes Kaiser. At the back of his mind, no matter how familiar he is with one person, it is still not good to reveal his daughter's secrets. That's why he plans to be more careful from now on. Then all of a sudden, one vendor started screaming, asking everyone to catch the kid who was now running away. Realizing that a shoplifting incident had taken place, Kaiser went on to help the vendor by stopping the kid on time. The kid then tries to get out of Kaiser's grip. However, it seems like no matter how much she tries, Kaiser is just too strong for her. The vendor, who now looks so exhausted and stressed, thanks Kaiser for his help. Kaiser then asks him what has happened, as it turns out the girl ran away after eating his products. But what's worse is that she ate all the apples lined up at the front of the store, all without paying a buck. The kid then starts explaining, saying that she didn't know the vendor needed money for her to eat some apples. However, it seems like the vendor has now been so fed up, so he went on to threaten the kid that if she doesn't pay, he will have a night on patrol come over. Immediately, the kid started begging the vendor not to call the authorities. She even suggested that it would be best if the vendor just called her parents. After all, it wouldn't look good for both of them. However, it seems like the vendor doesn't want to waste any of his time anymore. Since the two don't want to compromise, Kaiser decides to pay for the apples himself for now. At the back of his mind, the kid really doesn't seem to have any money. So on her behalf, Kaiser asks the vendors for forgiveness. As Kaiser hands over the money, the vendor is a bit surprised considering it seems too much for some apples. Kaiser then tells him to think of it as a fee for the inconvenience. Now that the problem has been solved, the kid then tells her thank you to Kaiser. But she wonders why he even pays for her considering he's a total stranger who doesn't have any obligation to pay for anything. So the kid then suddenly thought that Kaiser might ask her to do something dirty in exchange, which Kaiser assures her he will not. To set things straight, Kaiser went on to explain that they wouldn't have been able to calm things down if they hadn't done that. Since the kids don't know she needs to pay for the apple she eats, Kaiser reminds her to do so next time. Although the vendor thought she was such a bad person, Kaiser knows that she is not a liar at all. This made the kid laugh out loud. It turns out that the kid actually knows Elsa, and it just happens that Elsa and Kaiser's personality is somehow the same, causing her to laugh in amazement. Then after a brief moment, Elsa enters the scene, looking so relieved that she has now found the kid who turns out to be Lady Prim. It seems like the kid is one of the royals and it just happens that she snuck out of the castle again, causing a huge panic. Noticing Kaiser on the side, Elsa went on to ask him what he was doing in this said place. Kaiser then explained that something came up and it just happened that he passed by. But more importantly, Kaiser went on to ask Elsa as well if she knew the kid, to which Elsa went on to say yes. It turns out that Elsa is actually Prim's royal guard, which means that this kid whose real name is Prim Vergenstein is actually the princess of the country. As he got home, Kaiser immediately cooked some dinner for his daughters. When Anna and Meryl are almost done with their dinner, Elsa enters the scene. Anna asks why she took longer than expected to come home, and if there are any problems of some sort. Kaiser and Elsa went on to tell what happened to them earlier, explaining that Kaiser happened to come across Princess Prim, whom Elsa is guarding back in the castle. It seems like earlier, while they were still in the market before Prim and Elsa went on their way back to the castle, Prim said thanks to Kaiser once again for saving her. Hearing this made Anna surprised since this meant Kaiser had finally met the princess. However, it seems like Meryl is jealous of the fact that her daddy has met another woman once again. Realizing that Anna knows of the princess, Kaiser goes on to ask her if she happens to know much about Prim. Anna then stated that it is quite common knowledge to some that Prim is the king's only child who is said to be the future ruler of the country. Although she is a princess, she is said to be a selfish tomboy who always causes trouble in the castle. There was a time when Anna tried to teach her how to run a country but it seemed like Prim was too much for Anna to handle by herself. On the other hand, it seems like Elsa also has more to say about Prim, 
It turns out that Prim has asked her to arrange a meeting with Kaiser again, since she wanted to meet him once more. Although Elsa has already told the princess that Kaiser is very busy, it seems like she really insisted a lot, so Elsa couldn't do much about it. When Elsa tried to tell her that Kaiser couldn't come, Prim suddenly went on this huge fuss, which explains why Elsa came home later than usual. As a result, Elsa asked her father to grant the princess a wish to make her work a little bit easier. Since this is a royal decree, Kaiser went on to agree with Elsa's request immediately. After all, she can't do much about it anyway. The next day, as soon as Kaiser arrived in the castle, everyone suddenly started approaching him. All glad that he had finally come considering the princess had not stopped making a fuss since early in the morning since she badly wanted to see Kaiser once again. Seeing everyone's reaction, Kaiser asks himself how big of a tantrum the princess made to cause such a commotion. As soon as he arrived at the throne room, his presence immediately caused Prim to smile so widely. Even Queen Sonia Wagenstein is so delighted to finally meet him in person. As Kaiser pays his respect to the royals, the queen then asks one of the knights to bring over the money they have prepared to repay Kaiser for the troubles. Seeing the lumps of money laying before him shocked Kaiser as he never expected that the royals would go that far just to repay him. Seeing Kaiser's reaction made the queen question if this amount was not of Kaiser's liking. To avoid any misunderstanding, Kaiser stated that was not the case at all. He explained that if anything, he couldn't accept this much money. Just the amount of money he paid for the apples was already fine with him. However, it seems like the queen can't possibly allow that. If she didn't properly thank Kaiser for helping her daughter, it would be such a shame for the country. Besides, not accepting the king's kindness is not very commendable behavior as well. In that case, Kaiser has decided to just donate this money to an orphanage. As a result, the queen immediately did as Kaiser requested. Now that things have calmed down, the queen expressed how amazed she is at the fact that Kaiser would even go out of his way to give the money away, just showing that he doesn't seem to be greedy at all. With that said, it seems like Prim has something to tell Kaiser as well. Without hesitation, Prim asks Kaiser to be her official property. Hearing this shocked Kaiser a little, so Prim explained that she had taken a liking to Kaiser and that's why she wanted to make him hers, no matter what. However, it seems like Kaiser doesn't follow at all, so the queen went on to further explain that Prim just wishes to speak with him more. As a result, she as the queen asks Kaiser to be Prim's personal tutor. But of course, she is not asking him to do it for free, as he will be compensated well if he accepts this job. Since the former king passed away five years ago, the queen has been too busy to take care of Prim. But it seems like no matter how much she tries to, she always fails to teach her some real life experiences in the outside world. That's why she's asking Kaiser to show Prim what it truly feels like to live outside the castle. Hearing this made Kaiser realize that maybe the reason why Prim is so spoiled is because of the fact that she lost a parent at such a young age, causing her to have this trauma that has been making her act in such a way. Now that he finally understands the reason why, Kaiser can easily navigate the ways to teach Prim the ways of life in an easier way. With that being said, Kaiser then asks how often he should come to meet Prim, to which the queen answers it's really up to him. That's why Kaiser now plans to free up his schedule to come as much as possible. But the queen assures him that he doesn't need to be so stiff about it, as he can just think of it as a play day. After that brief meeting, Elsa then apologizes to her father for causing so much trouble. Kaiser then tells her not to worry much about it, since it is a good thing that he is having so many jobs. Besides, since the queen is busy, Prim also needs an adult to take care of her. Although for sure Kaiser couldn't replace her father, he hopes to at least make her feel that sense of joy once again. Hearing this made Elsa really amazed at her cool and kind father. A few days later, everyone in the castle is now preparing, since it's the day that Kaiser will officially start tutoring the princess. The royal head maid, Luna Belfast, is assigned to guide Kaiser around the castle and inform him of important notes that he needs to know. With that said, after the queen briefed her on what to do, she went on to speak with Kaiser in person. They went on to introduce themselves to one another and eventually started talking about what they were about to do. Kaiser is a bit shocked when Luna states that although he is assigned to be Prim's tutor, he doesn't have to do anything since she is also working as the princess's educator, which is why Kaiser's interference is not needed at all. At the back of Kaiser's mind, did he really make another evil adversary? So before anything gets out of control, he informs her that what she wants him to do is impossible, considering this is a personal request from the queen, so he can't just stay here and do nothing. However, it seems like Luna is persistent in forcing that Kaiser is not needed at all so he can't just allow him to get close to the princess anytime he wants to. So Kaiser asks why she is so adamant about it. Well, as it turns out, Luna is one of those crazy royal fanatics, and as the princess's diehard fan, she won't allow anyone to steal her spot in the princess's heart. So Kaiser went on to explain that even though the queen asks him to be Prim's tutor, all that he is asked to do is actually just play with her. So he assures her that he is not going to teach Prim anything weird 
so there's no need to worry about it. However, it seems like Luna sees this as a bold-faced lie. As Prim and Elsa enter the scene, Luna immediately goes to grab the princess, telling her that they are going to learn about mathematical equations for the day. Immediately, Prim stated that she didn't want to, and that what she wanted was to play with Kaiser all day long. Seeing Luna and Prim bicker about the lectures made Kaiser laugh a little, so he asked Elsa if the two were always like this, and it seems like they are. Since Luna is very fond of Prim's cuteness, she always tries her best to teach Prim the rules, but it seems like Prim is too rebellious to even want to. Since Prim really doesn't want to learn, Luna comes up with a plan to entertain the princess without Kaiser's help. As they move to the main hall, a group of performers arrive, all in their best costumes in hopes of entertaining the princess with all their might. Luna does this to prove to Kaiser that no one really needs his help, since she can handle all the things the princess needs on her own. With that said, with much enthusiasm and confidence, Luna asks the performers to do their thing one by one. However, no matter how much they try to, Prim only sees it as silly or boring. Since nothing is working at this rate, Luna is worried that the princess will go along with that man now. At the back of her mind, if that were to happen, Kaiser would defile the princess, so she wonders what she should do now. In the midst of Luna's dilemma, one of the performers she hired started causing problems after his magic tamer staff broke. Now that the wild beasts were going mad, Kaiser went on to stop them in one go. This made everyone surprised, causing even Luna to be so amazed. As a result, she went on to say her thank you to Kaiser for protecting the princess. Since Luna now feels so guilty about what happened, she asks Kaiser to let her do whatever he wants so that she can repay him. Kaiser then went on to ask her to give him permission to take care of the rest of the show. Although it is not exactly a show, he is sure that Prim will definitely enjoy it. This caused Luna and Prim to stay silent in the midst of anticipation. Now the question is, what is it that Kaiser is about to do now? We're all about to find out. Since Kaiser thought that Princess Prim would really enjoy a field trip to the Adventurer's Guild, he decided to take her together with Elsa and Luna. As soon as they got off the carriage, Prim couldn't hide her excitement in finally seeing what kind of place the Adventurer's Guild really looked like. Immediately, as she observes her surroundings, she goes on to bluntly state that the place is a gathering of vulgar and violent people. Hearing this made some of the adventurers furious. However, before they can even pick a fight with little Prim, Elsa immediately steps in, apologizing to the adventurers for what Prim said. Meanwhile, Luna then asks Kaiser why they even visited the guild, and if this is what they are about to come across with. Kaiser then smirked in awkwardness with him explaining that it would just make sense in a bit. Then suddenly, Anna enters the scene, surprised at the fact that Prim is in the building as it is quite unusual to see a princess in such a place. Immediately, Kaiser asks for his daughter's permission if they can take a bit of her time. To make Prim a bit nervous, Anna started teasing her, acting all scary. Due to her nervousness, Prim immediately explained that it was Kaiser who brought her to the guild, and it was something she wasn't even expecting herself at all. Anna somehow finds this a bit unusual, so she goes on to ask Kaiser if this is true. Kaiser then stated that it was really his idea. It seems like he decided to visit the guild to ask Anna if they could snatch one of the E-rank missions so that Prim could be trained in a real-life scenario. For today's mission, Kaiser wants Prim to look for a mission dog. However, Prim finds this as a pointless mission, so Kaiser goes on to explain to her that even though it is just an E-rank mission, which is considered to be one of the easiest missions there is, Kaiser still finds this as a great way for her to train. Basically, a dog hunt mission involves finding a stray dog by chance and bringing it to the guild. If that dog happens to be the one the guild is searching for, then the adventurer hands it over and it's a done deal. It's not really a mission that needs an adventurer to go all in. However, the fact that one should find a single dog in the vast city that is the royal capital is quite a challenge in itself. Since Prim really likes challenges, hearing this made her eye sparkle in excitement. Now that she is already motivated, Prim went on to initiate the find without hesitation. Anna also hands over a sketch of the dog, so that the princess's quest to find it would be a lot easier. Anna also stated the place where some residents last saw it. But before they go on their way, Anna reminds the princess that commissioning a mission to someone is not allowed, so she needs to be wary of it. Now that Prim is already hyped up, it seems like the mission will go smoothly from here on forward. However, for Luna, that isn't the case at all, since she surely thinks that Prim will eventually get bored and frustrated in due time. So there is no way possible that she will be able to find the dog anytime soon. Aside from that, Luna also can't help but wonder if this will really entertain the princess. So Kaiser goes on to assure her that she doesn't need to worry since he has everything under control. For now, all they need to do is look for the dog as much as they can. For a good minute, Prim keeps on looking for the dog, to the point that she keeps asking residents around the area if they happen to come across the dog once. 
However, as she failed to locate or even get any crucial information about the dog's whereabouts, Prim started getting frustrated, just the way Luna had predicted it. When the time comes that she is already on the brink of giving up, a dog happens to walk past them. Looking at it, Prim somehow noticed that it was the same as the dog they had on the poster. As a result, Elsa immediately volunteered to get it as soon as possible. However, before he can do so, Kaiser stops her on time. Kaiser then explained that this is Prim's mission, so if they do the work for her, there is no point in doing this at all. Elsa is a bit hesitant to follow her father's orders. However, it seems like Prim has already realized that Kaiser is actually right. So she went on to tell Elsa that she would take care of everything from now on. After all, for her, the royals should carve their own paths with their own power. So she made it a mission to catch the dog by herself no matter what. Although Prim is pumped up about doing it at the beginning, after a good minute, she starts questioning her decision. It seems like no matter how much she tries to, the dog somehow runs faster than she expected it to be. At this point, the thought of giving up started to linger at the back of her mind once again. That's why Elsa went on to motivate her, saying that she shouldn't let this incident cause her to give up. Kaiser and Luna then started to think that maybe it was already time to help the little princess. However, surprisingly, it was Prim who stated that she would do it herself no matter what. Since she was obviously tired from running around, Kaiser decided to let her grab something to eat. After eating a pile of pancakes, Prim started to gain energy, and as a result, she started chasing the small doggy once again. Her energy has now skyrocketed so much that even the dog started to get exhausted by how hyper she was. However, no matter how much she tries, it seems like she keeps losing the dog again and again. What's worse is that the dog now completely remembers her, so it got even harder for her to catch it. Since it's already starting to get dark soon, Luna suggested that they should just call it a day and continue it tomorrow. However, it seems like Prim is now so dedicated to finding the dog that she refuses to go home unless she catches that little creature. Since she has been doing this again and again, she started to think logically about how she will catch the dog once she gets her eyes on it. After analyzing the whole situation, Prim suddenly comes up with a plan that she confidently thinks will work. Prim thought that for sure dogs would like to taste good food. She went on to ask Kaiser and the others to buy her the most delicious looking juicy meat there is. After purchasing one, she went on to build her trap, putting the meat at the end of an alleyway. As the dog smelled the aroma, it immediately went on to grab it just like Prim expected him to do. When the dog finally falls under her trap, Prim immediately holds it in place, putting it on a leash. And just like that, her mission has finally been accomplished after trying so many times. This small accomplishment somehow caused Prim to jump in happiness. Looking at how big the princess's smile is, Luna can't help but be amazed as this is the first time she has seen the princess have so much fun. So Luna asked Kaiser if this was indeed really his goal from the beginning. Kaiser then stated that all he wanted was for the princess to experience something new. Due to her careful upbringing, Prim has never had a chance to try out much of anything. That is why Kaiser decided to put her on this dog hunting mission. In this way, she will be able to learn something new through a relatively strange experience. Going through trial and error, Prim could have the chance to overcome things that she never thought she would ever deal with. But what is the most interesting part about this process is the fact that Prim is the one who finds answers to her own problems. After all, where is the fun if someone else is doing everything for her? So she needs to be proactive and get it done herself. Now that Prim already knows this, Kaiser is sure that she will keep growing more and more over the coming years. Hearing this made Luna feel somehow guilty for all the insulting things she said to Kaiser earlier. That's why now, as an apology, she takes back everything she has said, allowing Kaiser to keep taking care of Princess Prim from now on. At the back of her mind, Prim would learn better if she was at Kaiser's side than hers. Noticing that Luna started to lose confidence and worth in herself, Kaiser tells her that everything she has done so far will definitely help Prim in the long run, so there's no need to blame or look down on herself. All she needs to do now is to take the time to actually figure out what Prim wants to do so that she will be able to entertain her more easily. Now that they've already done what they need to do, as they are about to go home, Luna asks if they could pass by Kaiser's home for a bit so that they could clean up a little. As they were taking a bath, Anna then just got home from work. Since they only had a few chairs, Kaiser decided to get some of them from the bathroom alley, not knowing that Luna and Prim suddenly came out, causing an awkward encounter. As a result, throughout the rest of the dinner, which is by the way Prim loves so much, Kaiser looks tense at how furious Luna is with him. To make Prim fall asleep, Kaiser tells her a cute fairy tale story about a hero who defeated the Demon King. In Kaiser's story, 
the hero was a master of both sword and magic. The hero, along with his companions, overwhelmed the Demon King's army, until at last, they reached the Demon King and attacked his castle. In the story, the hero engages in a mortal battle against the Demon King for three days and three nights. It was quite a hard-fought and fierce battle, but once the hero pierced the Demon King's heart, he initially won in the end. Thus, the hero married the princess and became the king. In the end, the hero and the princess created a wonderful country where no villains ever lived, and they eventually lived happily ever after. Hearing such a story with a happy ending made Prim excited, so she hoped Kaiser would read more to her in the future. As it turns out, Luna has allowed Prim to stay the night in Kaiser's house, which is such a surprise to Prim since Luna is the type that would force her to go back to the castle no matter what. Well, it seems like Luna decided to go back to the castle without Prim, as she thought since it was already late, it would be better to let the princess spend the night at Kaiser's place, considering the princess must be really tired and it's already dangerous for her to travel at such hours. After all, Luna has no reason to worry since the Master of Swords and the Sage live there as well. But before Luna goes on her way back to the castle, she reminds Kaiser not to do anything bad or stupid to the princess, since if he does, Luna will make sure to make him pay no matter what. Going back, it seems like Prim is so happy to spend the night with Kaiser and the others. Even while laying in bed, she can't contain her excitement as she giggles due to happiness. Kaiser then asks her why she is so happy, and Prim explains that her spending time with Kaiser has somehow caused her to simply remember the time when she and her father slept together every day. Back then, the king used to read her the same picture book Kaiser just read. Since they started talking about the king, Kaiser went on to ask Prim more about her father. Prim immediately boasts about how great her father is, stating that before he was crowned, her father actually saved her mother from bandits. As they got married, he then became king and pursued policies that put people's happiness first. As a result, he became close to the people of the kingdom. Hearing all this made Kaiser wish he met the king at least once in his life. Since they are already talking about fathers, Prim then went on to ask Kaiser what kind of person his father is. He then went on to explain that his father was an instructor at a swordsmanship school. But the saddening part is when Kaiser was little, their village was attacked by a pack of monsters and his father died along with his mother. As a result, Kaiser has grown up alone since the beginning. Since he has been alone, Prim wonders if he doesn't feel lonely and how can he say he has already gotten over it. Kaiser then explained that at that time, he felt more powerless than lonely, since he wasn't able to do anything. He thought he more or less knew his way around the world, but when he actually came face to face with a monster, he couldn't move his body anymore. After the incident, Kaiser didn't want anything to ever be taken from him again. So he became an adventurer that trained so hard to be able to avoid living on his own. Since he didn't have time to feel lonely due to his packed schedule, time passed by so quickly for him. Hearing this made Prim so amazed, since till now, she hadn't recovered from losing her father. She would spend his days without doing anything. Prim expressed that she feels like she needs to do something to become a respectable adult. But no matter how she tries, she hasn't done anything right at all. That's why she hates herself so much. Whenever people cheer her up, she ends up getting rebellious, since she thinks that she can't live up to the people's expectations of her. At this point, Prim starts to express how scared she is of growing up, as she thinks that if her father saw her state now, he'd be really disappointed. Kaiser then went on to assure her that all these were wrong, since she had grown into a beautiful and healthy girl. As a parent, he can say that Prim has become someone who any parent would be proud of. For sure, the late king also wanted Prim to grow up healthy, regardless of whether she was an impressive adult or not. So Kaiser reminds Prim that there is no need for her to hate herself. After all, children like her shouldn't have to walk on eggshells around their parents. As long as she does what she wants and lives healthy, that's all that matters for now. Kaiser also added that if there are some instances where Prim doesn't understand something, she shouldn't be scared to ask the people around her, including Kaiser, since they will do the best they can to help her no matter what. After talking for a bit, Prim slowly falls asleep. As he closes her eyes, she tells Kaiser how thankful she is for today, as she really had fun. In the next few days, the queen started to ask Luna about the princess's well-being. Luna then proudly says that the little majesty has been well-behaved. She has been working hard at studying since the morning. By the looks of it, it seems like she has already determined to become a great ruler like the hero in the picture book. Luna can't deny the fact that ever since Kaiser came, Prim's behavior has drastically changed. She used to push people back with everything they did but now she is being more proactive and asking questions. At this point, both the Queen and Luna are thankful for the fact that they made the right choice to leave Prim in Kaiser's hands. Meanwhile, somewhere around a tavern, two men are talking about the Clydes, from Kaiser's beautiful and skillful daughters 
to Kaiser's own monster strength. It just happens that one of the customers heard the two talking. So without hesitation, the woman approaches the adventurers, asking them if she can join them for a bit. Meanwhile, Kaiser looks back at the time he was so eager to be on top, the determination he had to become the world's best adventurer. It's already been 18 years since he started taking care of his daughters. They're all grown up now, and he must no longer have that sense of urgency he had back then. At the back of his mind, his age might have caught up to him already. After thinking deeply for a bit, Kaiser then went on to visit the guild for the time being. He immediately went on to see Monica to show her the core of the golem he defeated as proof. As Monica analyzes it, she wonders if Kaiser really did defeat it considering golems are known to be B-ranked monsters. Since she started to get suspicious at how great Kaiser was, she went on to ask if he was not just buying these cores from some merchant. Before their conversation goes too far, Anna enters the scene, assuring Monica that her father wouldn't tell such a lie at all. However, it seems like Monica is persistent about it, so Kaiser keeps on explaining his side, with Monica not even listening to what he is saying. Anna then went on to tell Monica that her daddy has been this strong since she was little. When Anna told her that Kaiser was already in A-rank at the age of 16, Monica couldn't help but be surprised. So at this point, she slowly realized that her speculations may have been wrong, since if Kaiser had been this strong since the beginning, it simply meant that he was some sort of prodigy. Kaiser then starts to wonder why no one knows about what happened to him in the past, considering the disappearance of an entire village should have been a huge deal. Before he gets enveloped in his own thoughts, Kaiser decides to finally make his way back to the academy. However, before he finally goes off, Anna informs him that someone came to the guild looking for him. Kaiser immediately asks who it was, but it seems like Anna also doesn't know. All she said to the woman was Kaiser was on a mission, and after that, the woman just left without saying a word. But one thing is for sure, Anna felt this presence of danger around the woman, considering she had pointed a sword as tall as her at the receptionist. Although Anna doesn't need to worry about the safety of Kaiser, but the thought that the woman might bring some problems along with her is what scares Anna the most. For now, Kaiser plans to lay low and observe the whole situation. As he got to the academy, the director started to tease him with teacher Irene once again. As Irene blushes in shyness, Norman goes on to inform Kaiser that he can't find Meryl anywhere. Kaiser finds this odd since Meryl went to school early that morning, so he thought that maybe Meryl was developing yet another spell somewhere. The teachers then asked what she was working on this time, and what Kaiser said next shocked them. It turns out that Meryl is researching on how to make her own immortality potion. Everyone knows that immortality is a forbidden spell that has never been accomplished by wizards in the past. If Meryl succeeds, it will eventually turn out into a huge mess. For sure, wars could be waged over her research. However, it seems like the director finds this interesting. After all, her research about it doesn't mean she'll succeed. But Kaiser is sure that Meryl will definitely do her best to achieve success no matter what. In the midst of their conversation, the director sensed that someone had breached the protective barrier of the school. Immediately, she tells the teachers to find the intruder as soon as possible. While on the case, Kaiser remembered that Centoria is a magic academy that holds almost all magical papers and research materials, so maybe the intruder is after those things. Then, a few minutes later, Norman informs Kaiser through their walkie-talkie device that he has finally found the intruder. However, it seems like Norman has no plans to ask for backup since he thinks that this is the perfect time for him to redeem the spotlight that Kaiser took from him. However, in the end, he was defeated for some reason. When asked if he saw what the intruder looked like, it seems like Norman couldn't tell considering the enemy used illusion magic to hide themselves in a fog. Realizing that they are fighting against someone skillful, Kaiser tells everyone that they better watch their backs. But in the end, they still don't know where the intruder is headed. At this point, Norman finally revealed that before he passed out, he saw that the intruder was making his way to the special education building, obviously looking for something in the labs. Immediately, Kaiser makes his way to the lab to check if Meryl is alright. Thankfully, she was, and what is more surprising is the fact that she was the one who swayed the intruder away as well. But this time, the director plans to stop the chase and just strengthen the school's security. After all, it seems like the intruder has already run away. With that being said, since Meryl fought it one-on-one, -on -one, Kaiser asks her for descriptions. However, it seems like Meryl is so deeply in love with her father that all she can think about is him to the point that she can't even remember what the intruder looks like. The next day, Elsa makes people's heads turn as she walks past the market area. Everyone can't seem to deny the fact that the kingdom swordmaster is indeed such a beauty. As she makes her way to the whole area, Elsa introduces herself to everyone she comes across, informing everyone that she is currently on patrol duty around the royal capital. It is known that night patrols are effective at preventing crime and giving the citizens a sense of security. 
It is one of their most important duties as Knights of the Kingdom. As Elsa patrols around the cities, she gets the chance to be close to the citizens. However, although patrols seem harmful, it is actually not common for incidents to happen while patrolling. And while this isn't the type of duty that a knight commander would do, it just happens that Elsa really enjoys it. In order to protect this peaceful everyday life, Elsa must become far stronger than she used to. At the back of her mind, she hopes that someday she'll be able to make everyone live without worry in the royal capital. Then, during the seemingly good day, a woman shouts at Elsa, asking her identity. As she turns her head, Elsa immediately asks the woman what she can do to help. The mysterious woman then stated that someone had told her Elsa was one of Kaiser's daughters. Out of nowhere, the woman asks Elsa to take out her sword, which obviously makes Elsa shocked as she wasn't expecting any of this to happen. Elsa then went on to ask the woman what the big idea was, and the woman teasingly stated that she just wanted to play for a bit. Elsa tried to calm the situation down by asking the woman to drop the bad jokes considering they were in the middle of the city. However, it seems like the strange woman is persistent in fighting Elsa no matter what. Meanwhile, at the Knight's Orders camp, Natalie pants in exhaustion as no matter how much she tries to defeat Kaiser, it just happens that she can't even land a hit on him. Instead of pinning her down, Kaiser went on to encourage the young knight that she was almost there. All she needed was more dedication and practice. However, it seems like Natalie finds that a bit impossible to reach. At this point, she started to feel like giving up since things now seem unfair on her part. Kaiser then reminds her that she doesn't need to be so pressed about it. After all, she already has the talent for this. All she needs to do now is never give up. As long as she keeps up with her training, she can definitely get stronger in no time. However, at the back of Natalie's mind, there's no way that Kaiser would tell his equals that they have a talent for something, which simply means that Kaiser still doesn't see her as such. This statement somehow made Kaiser speechless, as he wasn't expecting Natalie to think about this whole situation in such deepness. But he knows that he needs to lecture Natalie if he wants to push her to do her best. As a result, he went on to tell Natalie that seeing one's opponents as an equal is irrelevant in a sword fight. The way of the sword entails that one must face their self first, become one with their sword and protect someone. For knights like Natalie, defending people's love is not a game where one can win or lose. It is an important duty that the knights of the kingdom have been doing for many centuries now. As a knight, Natalie doesn't need to focus on small victories, but on the desire to keep getting stronger to protect her fellow citizens is what she should focus on. Since Natalie really wanted to hear the truth, Kaiser went on to tell her that there was no one in the squadron he saw as his equal. Still, making everyone stronger is his job, so if Natalie has any questions, he'll do everything he can to answer them no matter what. So Natalie finds this as the perfect opportunity to ask Kaiser how Elsa got those big watermelons. Feeling awkward at that sudden dirty question, Kaiser tells her that she needs to keep the questions about swords only as much as possible. With that said, as Natalie's serious question, she went on to tell Kaiser that she had been having trouble with her position while fighting. So she asks Kaiser for some advice as to what she should do to improve her posture. As Kaiser is about to tell her some tips, a beaten Elsa enters the scene, shocking both Kaiser and Natalie to the bones. Immediately, Kaiser asks his eldest daughter what happened, to which Elsa answers truthfully, explaining that while she was doing her patrol, a passerby suddenly pointed her sword at her. However, Kaiser didn't expect that Elsa would get so injured. Elsa then stated that they had a fair and square exchange of blows, but the outcome was her defeat. Even the other knights couldn't believe that someone had defeated their strong commander, the one and only swordmaster. But that isn't what is important to Kaiser. All he is thankful for is the fact that his daughter made it out alive. This made Elsa remember that as she observed, the woman wasn't really after her life. Once she broke Elsa's sword and the outcome was determined, the woman suddenly stopped attacking. This made Kaiser wonder what the enemy was really after, and who would even dare duke it out with the swordmaster of all people. Elsa then went on to continue that the person actually left a message, saying that Elsa should tell Kaiser everything that had happened, so Elsa wonders if her father knows anything about it. This made Kaiser stagnant a little, but before Elsa even asked further questions, he went on to lift her up, saying that they should get her wounds patched up now and that he would just get more about it later. At the back of Kaiser's mind, he starts to question whether the person Anna told that was looking for him is the same person who attacked both Meryl and Elsa now. Since he is unsure of it, for now, all he can do is his best to meet up with this person as soon as possible. To further investigate the whole incident, Kaiser decided to visit the place where the strange woman and Elsa fought. There, Kaiser asks his daughter for details regarding what the assailant looked like, which Elsa immediately describes to be a woman with crimson blood hair. Aside from her hair, her sword, which is as tall as her, also easily caught everyone's attention. And above all else, she also had this dangerous berserk aura. Hearing all these features made Kaiser think of someone he knew before. 
It seems like based on the description Elsa stated, this woman used to be Kaiser's companion before. He thinks that he has told Elsa about this woman before. Back when he was young, when his focus was centered around being an adventurer, one of the people he partied with at the time was a swordswoman with red hair and a long single-edged sword. But this doesn't coincide with what is happening now, since why would a former companion attack Kaiser's own daughter? But Kaiser made it clear that he is not sure yet if it's really his former companion. In the midst of their discussion, Kaiser sensed something, and a few seconds later, a loud attack destroyed the area where Kaiser and Elsa were standing. Elsa started to question what just happened, which Kaiser thought was a greeting. The woman then finally shows off herself, amazed at the level of attentiveness Kaiser has. Now that Kaiser has confirmed that it is really indeed his former companion, they went on to chat a little. However, it seems like both are fearless in expressing what they want to say. Although they were companions before, the beef between the two is so apparent. That, no one can ever deny it. It seems like the woman has some bad blood against Kaiser who has been hiding in the shadows for years. At the back of Kaiser's mind, this woman is one of those people who says the most unsettling things without any hesitation and is only interested in fighting. His former companion, with whom he studied and shared many joys and sorrows with. It's already been 18 years since they last met, and Kaiser couldn't deny the fact that Regina hasn't changed at all. The former companions then started exchanging insults as their way to catch up. Both somehow show this threatening attitude that would make anyone shiver in fear. But since this is usually how they talk to each other, having this conversation is like a trip to memory lane for the two. Kaiser is very open in expressing that Regina hasn't changed at all, as she is still that good old sharp-tongued girl he met when he was 14. Regina then went on to comment about Kaiser as well, saying that it was obvious she hadn't changed at all, considering all she did was be herself and express what she really thought inside. Kaiser, who is curious to know what Regina is up to now, asks what she has been doing for the past years. Regina, who is obviously so pissed, answered Kaiser's question with sassiness, saying that they both knew well that her only purpose for living is fighting. She then went on to say that the moment she can no longer wield her sword will be the day she dies, unlike Kaiser who left the royal capital like nothing. Kaiser then went on to ask another question, and that is what was her reason for attacking Elsa all of a sudden. Kaiser made it clear that depending on Regina's answer, he might be forced to take action. However, it seems like Regina wouldn't back down that easily, as she even asks Kaiser what if she doesn't want to answer at all. In that case, Kaiser has no choice but to force the answer out of her no matter what. As the tension intensifies, the animosity in Regina and Kaiser's eyes starts to get apparent. As a result, there's no other way to settle this than for them to have a real fight. After all, Regina is the type who won't listen to anyone who she thinks is weaker than her. If Kaiser really wants to know her reasons, then he needs to show off his real strength. With that said, if Kaiser ever wins, there's a big chance that Regina will tell him everything he wants to know. Hearing this conversation made Elsa wonder how strong Regina might be to be able to ask Kaiser to fight that easily. However, Kaiser immediately refused saying he didn't expect to be crossing swords with an old friend right after meeting them again, as he was hoping that they could first relax and talk over some tea. However, it seems like for Regina, swords speak louder than words. For her, they will only understand the paths each other walked by crossing swords. With that said, since it seems like Kaiser couldn't solve this matter through tea, he went on to tell Regina that they should go elsewhere, since they were literally in the middle of the city. Elsa suggested that they should fight in the castle drill grounds, which Kaiser immediately refused to do, considering he is aware that his battle with Regina is going to get hectic. So there's a chance Prim and the others could get caught up in their fight. With that said, they have no choice but to do the fight outside the capital. As they all go on to the battleground, Elsa calls for Meryl to act as first aid in case something bad happens to their father. Aside from Meryl, Elsa also called for Natalie since she is a swordswoman Elsa wanted to watch over the fight. At the back of Elsa's mind, this fight of Regina against her father would be considered one of the greatest sword fights in the world. Meanwhile, Kaiser went on to ask Regina if she really didn't want to use a wooden sword for this battle, and it seems like she has already decided since for her, using wooden swords would not make their fight real. It's only in battles where one puts their life on the line that one can convey their real worth. With that being said, Kaiser has no choice but to fight this girl with all his might. As the battle began, Natalie couldn't believe how amazing both Kaiser and Regina were at using their swords. Meryl, who doesn't know anything about swords, asks her older sister who is winning the fight, which Natalie honestly states that she can't even tell since both are really good. However, Elsa knows that their father is really struggling as he is completely on the back foot and he's just holding on for his dear life by blocking that absurd barrage of attacks. If Kaiser doesn't find a way to turn the tables and go on the offensive, there's a big chance he might die in the process. Back to the battle, since he is struggling a bit, Kaiser decided to back off a little. Regina then finds his laughable, considering Kaiser is known as the child prodigy. But based on his actions during this fight, his title might have been a scam after all. 
Regina also noticed that Kaiser had slowly lost his battle senses, making her miss the old Kaiser who was truly amazing back then, the man who knew how to use blades and magic together. There was even a time before when everyone knew that until Kaiser came along, and the only ones who had ever mastered both were the heroes of legends. So it is so baffling that someone so mighty as Kaiser is on the back foot against an ordinary person wielding a sword. As a result, Regina asks Kaiser to stop pretending already and start showing off his real power. It's really not that Kaiser can't use it, he just won't use it at all. As a result, without any choice, Kaiser has not decided to show off what he got. As he went on to initiate his attack, Regina easily dodged it off, even sending Kaiser flying using her invisible slashes. Witnessing such a thing shocked Elsa, since pulling off a feat like that requires extraordinary strength. As the battle intensifies more than it already is, the girls start to wonder if this means that things are now going to end badly. However, Elsa made sure not to lose hope on their father's strength. Although it may seem impossible, Elsa will trust Kaiser no matter what. But her only concern now is that if Regina's aim is to defeat Kaiser, then there is a chance that she is not going on the offensive as much as she should. From what Elsa has observed, it seems like Regina has purposely prolonged the fight. It's as if she is waiting for something. Well, as it turns out, Regina is trying to let out the Kaiser she used to know before, the one who is eager to win each fight and become the strongest swordsman there is. Since Kaiser swore to take care of his daughters 18 years ago, he already forgot what his real goal was. As a result, Regina is trying her best to make him show his real self from now on. After trying a couple of times, Regina eventually smiled as the rust of Kaiser's blade was now finally gone. 19 years ago, around the time Kaiser got promoted to an 8 rank adventurer, Regina first met him. Not long after she started her adventuring career, they both formed a party and it only took Regina a year to be promoted to B rank because of the way she behaved. People started calling her the Demon Princess. However, she wasn't very fond of that nickname at all because when Kaiser the Genius gets serious, he is a far bigger demon than she is. With that said, seeing the real Kaiser show who he really is now makes Regina somehow happy. Now that the fight is starting to get massively out of control, Regina smiles at the challenge she is about to face, fighting Kaiser with all she can. She can't deny the fact that Kaiser indeed is fast and lets off these heavy and strong blows. Although it must be painful to get hit by one, Regina is nonetheless glad that this is happening considering this is who Kaiser really is, the only man Regina has ever acknowledged. So even if it is challenging to defeat such a monster, Regina asks Kaiser to keep coming at her and show his real strength as she finds it exciting and fun. Kaiser, who is obviously now out of mind, went on to attack Regina from every direction. Despite the fact that Kaiser has lost so much blood earlier, he is nonetheless still powerful, causing him to become the most entertaining opponent Regina has ever encountered. However, at the moment, their swords are evenly matched, they'll get nowhere like this. So Regina went on to initiate that they should go all out in one last bout of strength. At this moment, they will now find out which one of them is indeed the strongest. Using her ebony sword of shadows, Regina initiates the attack. On the other hand, Kaiser then uses his lightning flash, and as their techniques clash, a loud bang sound starts to echo in the mountains shocking Meryl, Elsa, and Natalie who are watching from afar. Seeing how strong Kaiser still is, Regina then went on to take back what she had said earlier, as Kaiser, after all, hasn't changed. He is still that strong and mighty adventurer she met 19 years ago. It seems like with Kaiser's blow, Regina was immediately brought down. However, even after fainting, she still doesn't let go of her sword. This just shows that she truly is an amazing sword wielder. Seeing Regina's face up close causes memories of them together to flash back. Back then, they were inseparable, with Regina always clinging to Kaiser no matter what. Through all their success and failures, they were beside one another. They have kept supporting each other and used their differences as motivation to even be better. That's why when Kaiser somehow changed his visions in life, Regina also lost a part of her life in the process. As she wakes up after fainting, she wonders what happened to her as the place is completely foreign to her eyes. Then suddenly, Kaiser enters the scene, telling her that she should get up already. Kaiser then explained that she was at his house and she badly needed a place to rest after their fight. Thankfully, she felt extremely better after treatment. However, it seems like Regina also starts to worry for Kaiser, as it looks like he is beaten up really well too. Immediately, Kaiser assures her that Meryl has already patched her up, so there's no need to worry at all. Though she just got up, Kaiser can't help but ask her the reason why she attacked Elsa in the first place. As it turns out, Regina just wanted to see if Elsa was really worth it, for Kaiser to abandon his own goals considering Elsa is the youngest S-rank adventurer in all of history. But the result was so disappointing. Her reactions were slow, and her attacks were also too soft. Frankly, it was such a letdown for one nicknamed the Swordmaster. So Kaiser went on to tell her that wasn't the case at all, since for him, his daughters are the best there are. 
While they are in the midst of their conversation, the girls then enter the room, surprising the two. They then offered some tea to Regina. However, their comments on her looking like she is in love with Kaiser somehow made Regina blush. As a result, she immediately decided to finally go home after staying the night at Kaiser's house. But before she left, Kaiser reminded her that she could always come back whenever she wanted to. Although his daughter see Regina as a bad guy, Kaiser assures them that she is not a bad person as they spent many years together, so he can vouch for that. 